Just like the year 2009, the Lincoln Lions bring an 0-9 record into this year's 66th annual Big Bone game. However, they're going to use this as a statement game and retain the Big Bone. San Jose High brings a 4-5 record in and a three-game winning streak and are ready to bring the bone home. Players and fans, this is not just a game, it's a tradition. It is a tradition unlike any other in California. From San Jose, it is the 66th annual Big Bone Game between the San Jose High Academy Bulldogs and the Abraham Lincoln Lions. Greetings and welcome to Jaguar Field on the campus of San Jose City College. My name is Philip Kern. I am alongside the coach, Gene Dawson. With a max capacity of upwards of 10,000 people, every seat is expected to be filled for this historic rivalry. And coach, historic is probably the correct word for it. It goes back a long way. 1943 was our first ball game, and it's been continuous ever since, other than one game that uh, the Lions didn't have a, a team to field. So we are now at 66 uh, running, and Lincoln Lions have now won 11 in a row. We hope we change that today. We are definitely hoping for a competitive game this morning. And for some more perspective on the field, we go down to the third member of our broadcast team, on-field reporter Ernie Flores. We're here at the 50-yard line with Principal Tom Scheid from the San Jose High Academy and Principal Jackie Zowell from the Lincoln Lions. Mr. Scheid, can you share with me what your experience has been like this week, the spirit for preparing for the Big Bone game? It's been fantastic. Um, the students have been up. The school's been up. I've been at the school for 10 years, and I haven't seen the spirit uh, up this much you know, for the time I've been there. And the students were excited about the Junior Varsity game, and they're really up for today. It's, it's, it's a great day for both schools. Ms. Seller, how about you? How have they been preparing for this week, preparing for the Big Bone game? Big Bone and Lincoln High School is always a huge event. The whole school gets behind it. Our football players, our cheerleaders. We had a rally yesterday. Our football players dedicated their jerseys to honor teachers and administrators and staff members. Um, the kids had a great rally yesterday, competition between the classes. We've had events every day this week, and it's everybody looks forward to this game. It's a great way to spend Thanksgiving. Kids love it, and the tradition is a wonderful tradition that you don't understand unless you're here. Just a game. This is a tradition. This is definitely a tradition. I, this is my third year at Lincoln High School, and the first year I didn't understand until I came here and saw it. We see alumni from 20, 30 years ago. I believe we have a 1943 um, alumni graduate who's going to be bringing out the flag this year. So it is. A, it's a family event. It's all the people who have been here at San Jose High for all those years. So it's truly a, a, a well-honored tradition. Um, with our school being close to 150 years old and Lincoln being uh, since 1943, we are the history of San Jose, the city of San Jose. And so when we look back on our graduates and our, our school, we represent the entire community. So uh, this is a homecoming not only for both schools but for, for the city as well. And uh, again, it's great to see people from the past and going back way, way back to the 40s actually. So it's, again, it's a great day for both schools. Shai, you shared with us a little bit about the game, the Big Bone game, but what about the academic setting at San Jose High Academy this, this past year? Well, the Big Bone game today really uh, has been, we've been on a roll since the beginning of the school year. Our test scores, we were the most improved uh, high school in, the, uh, in San Jose Unified, and we've been on a roll since the beginning of the year, and uh, this just keeps us we're moving along, and, and we're excited about the school year, our graduates, we have our enrollments up, and the spirit's alive and well in San Jose High. How about you, Miss Ellen? Um, academics have always been strong at Lincoln High School. We have uh, a full array of AP classes. Our API is now 753, and we have a very strong college-going culture. Um, we have a lot of pathways for students at Lincoln High School, both for your college, to your college, and career pathways now. So academics have always been strong, and we're keeping it going. Well, to the two of you, congratulations on your academic success at your campuses, and congratulations in today's, today's game. Good luck to both teams. Thank you. Thank you, Ernie. Now, Coach. There is something we do have to cover in regards to today's game. Both teams come in with playing in different divisions of the Blossom Valley Athletic League. First of all, the Lincoln Lions, who have had faced some very tough competition and may explain why they have, they come in winless today after nine games. 
that's the difference today. The Lions have played in our A division. They're 0-9, unfortunately, but they've played some real tough competition. San Jose won our first game in two years this year, and we're 4-5. and five. We're playing the C division, but it's up to the kids to bring up their intensity to beat the Lions today. Now, you mentioned the San Jose High Academy Bulldogs. This is a squad that has shown great improvement as evidenced by their four win, five loss overall record. And actually, their league record is better than that. It's even at four and three. Now, Coach, even despite the division in different in, uh, divisions being played, where do you see the advantage going today? You know, it's really, as I stated uh, a little earlier, that the Bulldogs have to step up. They have to get their game up to the level of the Lions. The Lions played at a little faster speed than the Bulldogs have. So it's up to them to bring up their intensity, and hopefully uh, it's an even ball game today. Even the week leading up to today's game, we got a chance to interview players on both sides of the field. First, we go to our interviews with some of the San Jose High Academy players to find out what this Big Bone game means to them. What does it mean to you to play in the Big Bone game this year? Uh, it means a lot to me, sir. It, it's, uh, it's for the whole team, too. I mean, uh, they, they all put our, their hard work into it, and it means something to them. I mean, they'll always remember it. And what does it mean to you personally to win the bone? Oh, oh my God, it'd be like an honor to me, honestly. Like the two years I've been playing for varsity, it's like been mostly like my dream to bring home the bone. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we get to bring home the bone. Now, coach, you also got a chance to talk to the head coach of San Jose High Academy. What did you guys talk about? Jason Pierce is a born bulldog. He, his dad went to San Jose High, and I had an opportunity to coach his dad. I didn't have a chance to coach Jason, but Jason played ball, played football, basketball, and tennis and baseball. He played four sports. He's an outstanding athlete, and he just wanted to come back to San Jose High because those are where his roots are at. What do we have to do on this side of the field this year to beat the Lions? I think the most important thing that we're going to have to do is uh, play team ball. Uh, we're going to have to be able to execute. Even though Lincoln's 0-9, they're still a really good football team. They play in the A division, and we play in the C division. So they're still the favorites to win. Um, but we're going to have to execute. I feel that we match up really well with them, um, watching them on film and knowing how our team plays. But if we execute, minimize penalties, minimize any other mistakes, mental mistakes, um, we'll, be, we'll be okay. It'll be a good game. Well, of course, on the other side of the field, the Lincoln Lions, who have won 11 straight big bone games, they come in with a sense of pride on the line. And, Coach, we even got to have a chance to talk to some of the players and their coach as well. I talked with Kevin Collins, who's done one, one heck of a job, and I give Kevin all the credit in the world for keeping this game going. He doesn't have to play on Thanksgiving Day. He could go to the playoffs when he had a chance, but he kept the, the big bone game alive. What does the game mean to you? Well, it's become a, you know, it's for most of my adult life, I started coaching here when I was 28 years old, and for most of my adult life, my Thanksgivings have been over at uh, San Jose City College, and it's, it's part of my family's life, and it's just been, a, for me personally, it's a huge part of what I do. You know, my dad, I got married, I had kids, they all go to the games. Uh, my wife's family's from San Jose High and from Lincoln, and they're a big part of it if we win. And they're Lincoln alum, they like me, and if they're San Jose alum, they hate me, and vice versa, but it's, it's become part of my life. The Lincoln Lions, who have won 11 straight of these big bone games, we had a chance to talk to a couple of their defensive starters for today. We got to find out what this big bone game means to them as well. Big bone game means everything to us. It's, it's, a, it's basically a tradition to everybody. You go in, you come out, no matter what the score is, you know that's the one, number one place where you're going to see all your family, your, relati your relatives, and all your past friends. Well, basically, it's a big tradition here at Lincoln, and everybody is excited to take part in it, and we always look forward to it. Lincoln player Josh Ayala is a prevailing storyline today. Coach, what can you tell us about Josh? Last year, Josh broke his leg on the first play of the game and had to miss the whole basketball season and the track season. This year, he came out, was ready to play, played all seven, eight games, and unfortunately, had a helmet hit his same spot he broke last year, and, and hopefully he gets to play today. Josh, what is it going to mean for you to get in the game next Thursday? Well, it'll mean a lot to me because the last time I get to play with all my friends, and that's big. That's a big thing to me because this is their last game, and uh, last year I didn't get to play, and so it's going to be my first big bone game. So I'm pretty excited for that. We certainly hope for the best for Josh Ayala, and coming up, we will have the coin toss and football along the way. Don't go anywhere. Number 62, Eric Mitchell.
whatever's going to happen. But Number 64, Roman so Powell. The main thing is you got to trust each other in that field. Number 65, you don't want to look back Hector in 20 years Castillas. and not be proud of what you did. Number you 70, be able to look Marco the game to your teammates De La Cruz. And tell him, know that he's going to be Number proud of what he did. Number 71, Elias back. Know that Elias he back. Pina. All right, so let's give it our best. Coaches are done. Number they're done. 72, they're done. I'm not going to play this Dark. game. No, it's us. All right, Number they're 0 9. They lost nine games. Michael Hall. At least we can win this game, too. They Number bleed. They, they even take the crap like we do. Garcia. They do the same shit we do. So why can we Number be three. like them and beat them? We'll be better than them. Duncan. All right, look at that crowd. They're here because they Number believe in us. They support us right now. Nick. All right, they have faith in this team. Because we have done great things. But that have, that have, hasn't happened in like, what, 10 years? All right, so it's our time now. Time to step up and do our job. All right, so let's get a boom. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You guys will be here while I am this right now. Remember all that yelling I do while I was getting mad at you guys? You guys will be here next year. But right now, we're going to show At this time, we'd also like to show introduce We are the real the owners of that boom. All right? This crowd came for us. They came out. They've been here. Most of them have been here since like nine in the morning. They Brooklyn. came out to see us whip some ass. Traxler. All right. They don't give a shit. They still Andrea. Think, it don't matter Kelly. if they don't win no games. They still think they're better than us. You know why? Because they're in the eighties. It don't Durante. matter. It don't matter to us. We whip. Some, we'll whip ass. No matter what. Yeah. We play our hearts out. We leave our hearts out here on the field. Rodriguez. We kick their ass on the field. Go. 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 Here's the coin that we're going to use. That's a heads right there, and that's the tails. Okay, you're going to call it? What are you going to call? Heads. All right, he's going to call heads. And. Heads it is. You won the toss. We want the ball. You want the ball? Okay, which goal do you want to defend? Which way do you want to kick it? This way. You want to kick that way? Okay, put the backs. Get back to that goal. Get back to this goal. Over here, white. Over here, white. Over here, white. Okay, white team won the toss. We'll receive down at this end. Okay, guys, shake hands. Let's have a good ball game. Looks like San Jose has won the toss and has elected to The national anthem will be sung by the Lincoln, Lincoln School Choir under the direction of Anne Marie Katanopoulos. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars Today's officiating crew, we're going to or speak to Chuck Camuso, who's done 48 games here at the Big Bone Game. So he's going to kind of share his experience and his feelings as an official here today. Chuck Camuso? How you doing? Uh, th this is my 48th year for the Big Bone Game. And it's a, uh, obviously, it's a yearly thing for us and something that uh, family and myself look forward to. And we uh, plan the whole Thanksgiving Day game about it. Uh, my right here is Jim Bruno, 
Uh, he's been with me on this game for I don't know how many years, but quite a few, 15 or 20 years, and uh, former uh, San Jose High Bulldog. And uh, on my left is uh, Steve Lavelle. Uh, this is his first year uh, at the game. And John Plesh, he's been, done the game with me uh, a number of times. And sneaking in right here, Darlene Gomez, uh, who's uh, working her second, third uh, Big Bone game. Jim, Jim Bruno, you're a former player and stuff. Big Bone rivalry. You have Lincoln Lions who come out of the A division. You have the Bulldogs coming out of the C division. Do records matter or what's the feeling of that? Not in the bone game. It all starts over and, uh, you know, they'll be ready to go, both teams, and they'll have a good time. And just to add, too, um, you know, I'm getting old, but uh, Chuck was refereeing when I played, so he did my big bone game. Mr. Camuso, any final words before you kick off here at 11 o'clock? Well, no, we're, the, the crew's ready to go, and we're ready to have a, a fun time out here. And it is a fun time for Thanksgiving Day. And we are now set for the kickoff of the 66th annual Big Barn game here at San Jose City College. It is sure to be a dandy this afternoon. Kicking off for the Lincoln Lions will be number 30, Jorge Escobar. And the kick is away, and we are set to go. A little bit of a squibber. Picked up by number 21, Matthew Blea, and he fumbles the ball a little bit. He has to fall on it back on his own nine yard line. So already a precarious beginning as the Bulldog offense will take the field for the first time. Down We're going to find out real quick here. San Jose, San Jose's Preston offense 10. can get going against Lincoln. The last few years, they just haven't been able to get going in the last three or four years. So we're going to find out real fast. Perhaps a little pregame jitters from Matthew Blair as he had a little trouble with that squib kick. So the Lincoln Lions defense is licking their chops right now. Bulldog offense takes the field for the first time. Number 12, James Duran under center for the Bulldogs. Three wide receivers out, the pitch to Blea, and there's already our first flag of the game as Blea is stuck at his own line of scrimmage. Again, the Lions just Flag got on the play. He just got upfield, made the Illegal tackle. Illegal shift against the Bulldogs. And it's going to be against the Bulldogs. Penalty declined. So we will now have a second and 10. We have an interesting story. Penalty Captain is declined. Musa, brings up second down and 10. We'll talk about Chuck during the ball game. Indeed, we will coach, and it is now Second and 10 here for the Bulldogs. Duran under center, he takes the hike, a little screen pass, and it is complete, and he is quickly wrapped up. Number seven, Jose Arellano, with the first reception of the game, maybe for about three yards. So an early third down conversion opportunity for the Bulldog offense. And we'll see if they are able to pass do so. Is completed. This is a big play early, big play. Pick up a five, brings up third and five. So we don't make a mistake. Big play early in the ball. Game. It's more of a chess match early on. They want to see how this Lincoln defense will attack him. Ariano in motion. And ooh, a little bit of motion from the Lincoln defensive line. The handoff to Blea. He breaks through into the second level, but I don't think he's going to have enough for the first down. He gets to about the 20-yard line, maybe about a yard short. And so it is, a five-yard run by Blea. He read the hole well, but didn't quite get enough. Blea is a transfer from William Blam, and uh, he's just a little bitty guy. Gain of four, brings up fourth and, and uh, one. Everybody seems to have accepted him. Well, early fourth down, go for it call by the San Jose head coach. Duran under center, he fumbles the snap, and there's a little bit of a scrum up the middle, and Regardless of whether it's a fumble or not, it's a turnover and the Lincoln Lions will begin with their offense inside the San Jose red zone. Not a good start for the Bulldogs. Not a good start. Uh, don't understand that one. But let's see what the dogs have to do. They have to step up and get them in the mouth right now. You just have to wonder, so deep in your own territory, going for a fourth down conversion like that. So now the Lincoln offense will take the field. Number eight, Chris Pope under center for the Lions, going with a three-back formation in the backfield. 
Pope hands off to number five, Josh Ayala, and he's going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Lincoln Lions. Talk about a quick strike offense, but then again, when you're in your opponent's red zone, it's almost a gimme, but give credit to Josh Ayala, who we weren't sure if he was even going to play today. First play from scrimmage, takes it to the house. Great execution by the Lions offense. So now Jorge Escobar will kick the point after, and it is good. So a great start for the Lincoln Lions. One play and done. They get the first touchdown of the game, and they take an early 7-0 lead. And I don't know if what Bulldog fans are thinking after that first possession. I don't think they envisioned a start like that. Hi, uh, my name is Earl Santo, class of 48, and uh, I'm here uh, to watch the Big Bone game. Very big traditional game. Uh, it goes way back. To, I remember uh, going to the big game in uh, my high school years. Uh, Some special this year is my uh, granddaughter is one of the princesses of the uh, uh, big ball, uh, big bone. So that's the added uh, uh, attraction here today. Uh, we have seen a lot of. Uh, Good football throughout the years. I remember uh, a good friend of mine uh, played a few years after I graduated, and they won the championship game. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, football players that have really made it good in the uh, uh, in their lives as uh, professional football players. Uh, I, <coughs> I enjoy uh, the activities at San Jose High. We, we watch uh, most of the basketball program, at, uh, especially the girls, since my granddaughters have played. Okay. Uh, I don't know, we uh, are enjoying this beautiful day. I hope we can get some score going here pretty soon. Well, if there was any positive to that quick strike by the Lincoln Lions, San Jose gets the ball right back and they get a chance to redeem themselves. Lots of time left in the ball. Very true, it is a very, very early part of the game. We're not even two minutes into the first quarter. We talked about a referee check from us earlier. Chuck had a slight heart attack about four weeks ago and he uh, was working a ball game. He went down, spent a few days in the hospital and here he is out here Good to see him back on the field, coaching this Thanksgiving tradition. So now Matthew Blea back to return this kick from Escobar, number 30. And the kick is away, and another little bit of a squibber. Let's see what Blea does with this one. He fields it back at his own 14-yard line. He's got a little bit of space. Couple of flags on the field, but he's down the sideline, down to about midfield, and that's where he'll get knocked out. But we will see what the flags are, and of course, some of the Lincoln coaches pointing back to San Jose, maybe a block in the back. Both situations on a long play, we got a block in the back. It'll come all the way back. And it's, it is a clipping penalty against the Bulldogs. So just when you thought things were about to go right, it gets bumped back. Those are the mistakes the Bulldogs just can't make. They've made two of them so far, and hopefully this one doesn't hurt. But it's some big run back, and we get a penalty. So now as the Bulldog offense will take the field, they've been mixing it up in a little bit on the formation. We've seen a three wide receiver set. We've seen a standard two back set. Maybe a little bit of a chess match by head coach Jason Pierce. Maybe he's just trying to feel out what the Lincoln defense is going to do throughout this first quarter. I've seen Santa they play about three times this year and they do throw the ball, but it's tough to throw the ball out of your own end zone. So. Uh, Mr. Duran, he has a good arm, and let's hope he can get started here. Looks like the illegal block on the play. Oh, you mentioned Duran, who is going Ball to take the, the snap from under center. He'll only, get, he will only be as successful as the offensive line gives him enough time to do so. Absolutely. No question about it. Bulldog offense going with a standard two wide receiver, two back set. Ariano going in motion. And Duran going to his left. Screen pass over the middle, and it is caught by number 25. 
Michael Mendez. So a good chunk of yardage, and it'll be a first down for the Bulldogs. Little sideline pass for the rollout to the same side. Yeah. Michael Mendez. He picked up the receiver. Good ball, nice Bulldogs, play. first down. Durant showing his excellent mobility out of the pocket. And with, a, with the aggressiveness of the Lincoln defensive line, he's definitely going to need that today. So now we have a three wide receiver formation for the Bulldogs. Number 40, Jeremy Rios comes in motion. He is going to line up behind Duran. And here's the end of round handoff to number 30, Miguel, Riva, Miguel Rivera. And he's going to gain a little bit of yardage, probably about six, Miguel as he is knocked Rivera out of bounds. San, San Jose Harper asserting a little bit more aggressiveness Escobar. on the offensive side of the ball and much better start this time around. They mix it up a little bit. They're being a little successful here. Let's see. Gain of five brings up second and five. Second down and five now for the Bulldog offense. Duran lining up and looks like what to be a pistol formation. You watch the University of Nevada play football, you know what this formation is. Handoff right up the middle to Rivera, and he runs into a pile, but may have enough for the first down. So a little bit of a power running attack early on to keep this Lincoln Lion offense off the field, because you saw after one play, they can quick strike you from anywhere on the field. Controlling the ball right now. That's a good dive play. That's a good straight ahead play. They're controlling the ball at the minute. And that, is, and that is another first down for the San Jose Bulldogs. So two first downs in this possession. Bulldogs gaining Jerry a little bit of momentum here. Rios, the ball carrier last Standard pro set now for the Bulldog offense. Duran under center. Lincoln defensive line jumping a little bit. Duran rolling to his right. He's looking downfield. Durant He's going to tuck it and run. And he is going to get about six yards, maybe a little more as he is knocked out of bounds into his Durant own sideline. We have another Pick penalty up marker nine, on the field. Flag on the play. And of course, the Lincoln fans claiming holding on the San Jose Bulldogs, and it is against San Jose again. So two penalties just on this possession Lock right here. In the back. Just got to eliminate the, the mistakes. Bulldogs. Looks like they're playing them pretty even right now, but they've got to eliminate the mistakes. It is true of any team, you keep the mistakes to a minimum, you always give yourself a chance to win. But this looks like it's going to push them way back. So we will have a second down, and it looks like to be about 15. Down. Another big play early. Passing second and 15. Or We're going to see if Duran uses his arm. 7-0 Lincoln early on in this big bone game. Duran takes a snap, pitches it out to Matthew Blea, and he's got a little bit of daylight, and he makes it back past the original line of scrimmage and maybe a Matthew few yards Lee more. So another huge third down chance. Having a little success outside. Their speed looks like they're running outside very well so far. And number 21, Richard Azuri making the stop. What I'm seeing from Matthew Blea so far, you get him out outside, but outside of the tackles, he's got a lot of speed. He can turn the corner and break Second one and very eight. easily. So now a third down and eight for the San Jose Bulldogs. Durant under center, two backs in the backfield. A little bit of a bubble screen to Ariano. He's got the catch. He's looking for some daylight and not quite. He's going to fumble the football, but the Bulldogs recover. But it's going to Pass be. Is complete. It is fumble, yet recovered. Uh, Actually, by this the will be a third down. I beg recovery. your pardon. So still some life here for the Bulldog offense. We averted a mistake on the fumble. We recovered. It's a good job on the offense so far this draft. Of course, that's the second time the Bulldog offense has fumbled in this game, and it's only the first Third quarter, so you three. have to wonder about the ball security issues. If they don't get this under control, this could be a devastating situation. Two backs in the backfield, two wideouts for Duran. Hands it off to Blea, and he's Matthew fighting Blaine. through and doesn't quite get the first down. He ends up about a yard short. So very stingy possession there for the Lincoln Lion defense. So maybe Coach Pierce goes for it on fourth down here again. Decent drive. He's got to get field position. See what happens. 
Sometimes that's really what it boils down to. It's just the game of field position. And Duran coming back down the field for the Bulldogs. It looks like they will be going for it on fourth down again. Now they're going with their standard two wide receiver, two back set. And a little confusion at the line of scrimmage, and we're going to have to call a timeout. San Jose didn't either didn't like what they saw or didn't have the right personnel on the field. So they're going to have to talk like things over. An that you can watch and while we have a little bit of a break, we want to take this time to recognize some of the sponsors involved with this telecast of the Big Bone game this year. Names such as Leonard and Idalia Castro, California Solar Screens, Salas O'Brien Incorporated, Bob and Louie's Styling Salon, the San Jose High School Class of 1964 events, the Class of 64 Girls J JV For Soccer Association, Watch Tina Sherburn, the J.C. Smith Blues Band, who I understand played at December the 7th festivities the night before. At 12.30 p.m. December 11th. David and Diane Garcia, and Goya Chacon, class December of 68. At 9 and December so now as we return to the field of play, it is a fourth down and two situation for the Bulldogs. 7-15 left to go in the first quarter. Lincoln ahead 7 to nothing. Standard I formation set, and Lincoln may have jumped offside, and looks like San Jose is going to get the first down anyway. But we will wait to see what happens, and San Jose is going to get a first down. But, but number 61, Ismael Salazar picked up the loose ball. No whistles were blown on the field. Confusion out there. Matt, massive confusion because initially the ref indicated that it was a first down and marked it near midfield. So some utter confusion as Salazar picked up a loose ball and ran with it. Nevertheless, San Jose retains possession and converts that fourth down. So that's the third down on this drive. Solid drive, solid drive, a little offense. A little passing, a little outside running. They're holding on to the ball. That's a good job. And as more fans are starting to file in, a very, very good crowd. Even some of the end zone bleachers are starting to fill up with spectators. Now Durant snaps it. Fake handoff to Ariana. He is looking downfield for number 25, Michael Mendez. And incomplete, but we have another flag. It looks like penalty inter uh, pass interference on number two, Mark Ballet. And if that is, that's going to be a huge chunk of yardage forward for the Bulldogs. It was a good throw. Right on target. It was a very good throw by Duran, and also yep. credit the offensive pass line for holding that line. protection because on a play action pass, if you don't hold the defensive line, that could get blown up in the backfield very, first very quickly. Down, so another first down for the Bulldogs. They are moving upfield. They are inside the Lincoln 40 yard line. Their first trek into enemy territory today. About six and a half minutes left to go here in the first quarter. Lincoln ahead seven to nothing. Duran under center. The handoff to number 11, Richard Corner. And he gets about four yards on that play. Gain of three. A little reverse action, took a little time to develop. Got to be a little quicker. Speed has to get picked up just a little bit. And you have to credit Bulldog coach Jason Pierce. He's getting all of his weapons involved. Corner, he's getting Mendez involved, Jeremy, Jeremy Rios, Matthew Blea. So Lincoln has to account for everybody. Second and seven now. Duran with a little bubble screen. Caught by number 11 corner, and he's going to get a first down and a little more. Another good play. Another good big chunky yard for the Bulldogs. They're moving the ball quite well. Really forcing those linebackers to move sideline to sideline with all those little bubble screens, and so far it's been working very well. 
Lincoln, of course, an aggressive attacking defense from what we've seen so far. And it'll only be a third down. Third and two, it looks like, for San Jose. There's Duran under center. And a little movement on the line of scrimmage. It may be a false start for San Jose. They're shooting themselves right in the foot right now. They've got to stop the mistakes. They're moving the ball. False start is Bulldogs. Brings Just back five third. yards. Brings up third. And, and a false start it is. Eight. On the San Jose Bulldogs. So it is now turned from a manageable third and two to a difficult third and seven. So we'll see how Coach Pierce attacks this one. Single back formation, they move Rios out to the left. Blay is the single back, they're moving corner back towards the quarterback. Ariana moving around, play action fake. Duran moving to his right, looking downfield. He may have something open. No, it's an interception by Mark Belay, and he's trying to look for some daylight, and he's going to get tackled within his own 15 yard line. Duran trying to throw into double coverage. It does not work out. And Lincoln takes possession again. Kind of threw that one up for grabs. Ball stayed in the air way too long. Real easy chance for an interception, and it was taken. Did not quite have enough on that possession on that pass play. It was a good, it was very well drawn up. It was a play action. They had the Lincoln defense biting. But Duran had to for, had to scramble out to his right, and it didn't quite work out. There's a handoff to number four, Steven Robertson, and he's going to have some daylight. He's down to the 35-yard line and a good chunk of yards for the Lincoln Lions. A gain of about 17. Just again, typical tackle play by the Lincoln Lions, and just take that big chunk, big chunk. The Bulldogs held the ball for about four or five minutes there, and that, that was outstanding. So another first down for the Lincoln Lions wearing their home blues today with the yellow numbers. On the and we have a timeout on the field and an injured San Jose Bulldog on the sideline. And now we are ready for some football. The ref waves his arm and we are set to go. Clock starts up again. We are near the five minute mark here in the first quarter. Lincoln ahead seven to nothing. Hand off to Missouri. He's got a little bit of room and gains about three yards. Pick up a Again, second man through the Lincoln Lion offense. Full back dive and second back comes behind the dive and goes off tackle. And a very interesting formation too. You hardly ever see three running backs all in the backfield. So already we can tell that Lincoln's offense heavily predicated on the ground game. Power situation, absolutely. So second and five for the Lions, a handoff to Robertson. He's got a little bit of daylight and he's got to have a first down near midfield. One thing I'm noticing about Robertson, great vision coming out of the backfield. He finds a hole, he shoots right through it. And here's the most important part. For a running back, he has great patience. And I think it's a very underrated skill when you're carrying the ball to have the patience and wait for the hole to develop. So first down for the Lincoln Lions. Here's a handoff to Azure, and he's going to get about five yards there. Rich Azir, the ball carrier. Bulldogs are getting no Tripped penetration. Up by Lions are not going to drop the ball. They're going to have to step up. Six up five yards. Good work. Running backs are getting all the way Second to the two. corners and the free safety. It, it's Second very five. evident that Lincoln's offensive line is controlling the game right now. And you really win or lose the game from the trenches. Second down and five for the Lions. Hand off to Robertson. He's going up the middle. He's got a first down, a little more down to about the 30-yard line of San Jose. And a little bit of a scrum as some emotions are boiling over right now. Usually what accompanies a rivalry game. Just don't want to see any pushing and like football. Again, he's got all the way to the free safety. Bulldogs have to tackle. And that's what we've talked about all along. They have to step up and tackle. They haven't been doing that. So now first down for the Lincoln Lions as coach Kevin Collins
has really got his team going. And really, when you think about it, as disappointing of a year as they've had, I mean, anytime you go winless, it's disappointing. But I think if they are able to keep the bone home for another season, it might assuage that a little bit. That's exactly right. They're ready to play. We were over there watching them practice the other day, and they haven't won a game, but they know right now they can beat San Jose High. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a big deal. And they're right now they're rolling again. And across the way at the San Jose sideline, a little temporary motion right now as they they just watch one of their big guns go down. And Pope is going to have to roll to his right and just get rid of it. Great penetration by the Bulldog defensive line as they were trying to go play action to throw the Bulldog offense off, but they weren't biting. Again, you said it right, Phil. They had great Passes penetration, and that's key to defense. you got to get up field. You've got to number field. five. And you got to disturb the quarterback when he's moving. So now a second down and 10, 3.33 to go here in the first quarter. Lincoln ahead 7-0 over the San Jose High Academy Bulldogs. Pope back under Second center with 10. that three running back formation. Here's a handoff to Robertson. And he's going to inch forward a little bit. It's a little better. That's their power play off tackle. And uh, the first guy for the Bulldogs stepped up and made a good tackle. That's a good play. So it'll be a three yard gain, third down and seven but for Lincoln. They're already in field goal territory. So if nothing else, they can at least push it to a two score game even if they don't reach the end zone. Again, there's that three running back formation. Pope under center, he takes the snap. Hand off to number five, Josh Ayala, and he's not quite gonna get that first down. Josh Ayala. Maybe another Ball three carrier. yards on that play. So it'll definitely be a fourth down. So we'll see how Coach Kevin Collins wants to go about this one. And he's keeping his Alex offense Sevilla on the field on the stop. for a fourth down conversion. So let's see how this pans out. Pope takes the snap. He hands it off to Robertson. And does he have the first down? It's going to be very, very close. It's going to be very, very close. And it is short. He did not get it. So the Bulldog defense hangs tough. That's a good job. The old defense for the band stretched the long way. And once they got down the field, they tightened them. They did a good job with the last series. Good job. The bend but don't break philosophy, right, Coach? Absolutely. <laughs> so the Bulldogs take possession back with about two and a half minutes left in this first quarter. You're here at San Jose City College for the 66th annual Big Bone Game. My name is Philip Kern. I am alongside Coach Gene Dawson. A very competitive game so far. Unfortunately, we've already had an injury. Matthew Blea was taken off in an ambulance. Here's Duran under center. He takes the snap and a pile, but not much in the way of yardage for the Bulldogs. So easily be second down and eight. Both sides seem to be playing a little power football. Because they don't want to give up the pass. Pass might be a situation a problem. Ball carrier. We saw one interception so Pick far. Pick up of two, second and eight. That's right, James Duran already has one interception to his credit. He's back under center. A pro set, he's going to drop back to pass. He is looking downfield. He moves up and he's going to tuck this in there and run. And he could have a first down, and he looks like he does. Duran scrambles. Jacob Good with the tackle, nine. and they're going to give it to him. First down, San Jose Bulldogs. So Duran scrambles pretty well. And picks he up well the first down. He can speed. He can get outside. The he's outside. He gets upfield. Great athlete at the quarterback position. That is always very, very crucial, especially with the way the Lincoln defensive line's been playing. So now a fresh set of downs for the Bulldog offense. 122 left to go in the first quarter. Lincoln ahead 7 to nothing. Duran under center. He will hand it off. And the carry goes to number 16, Dave Patress. Dave Batres will probably have an Ball increased carry. role because of the injury to Matthew Blea. Pick up a four, brings up Looks second like and lines six. Of are pretty even. Everybody's getting a pretty good initial block on both sides of the field and uh, pretty even football. 
The offensive lines are really going to be a key, as we are seeing already, because both teams are wanting to establish the run and really only use the pass to keep the, the defenses honest. 40 seconds left here in the first quarter. Lincoln ahead 7 to nothing. Duran under center surveying the Lincoln defense. And there's a handoff to number 30, Miguel Rivera. He's got a first down and a little more. He's down to the 50. He's still on his feet. He's got to, to the 40, and he is going to have another first down. Miguel Rivera shifting side to side, doing the shake and bake for at least about 20 yards. Well planned out play. They have the Lincoln outside guy stepping down. Once they made the first first dive move, they, had, they handed to the man coming across. We had a little reverse first and action. Ten for the Bulldogs. Ball's in the 38 yard line. Set the Lincoln guys back on their heels a little bit. And with that horn, that means that we are at the end of the first the quarter. quarter. Very competitive back and forth so far in this Big Bone Classic. As Lincoln is ahead 7 0 after the first quarter. And we will now throw it to Ernie Flores, who has a special guest down the sideline. Ernie, who do you have? Hi, I'm Lance Anderson. Uh, I was the head coach at uh, San Jose High in 1985. Uh, Thanksgiving, uh, we beat Lincoln 24 to nothing. Uh, it was six to nothing at half. Uh, we ended up scoring three more touchdowns the second half after a, kind of a close game. Uh, I really loved the game. It was uh, my first experience uh, with a big rivalry game like this. In fact, it was the biggest rivalry game that I'd ever been associated with and still to this day. Thank you, Ernie. We are now back here for the second quarter of action at San Jose City College. And corner with the handoff on the end around, and a good chunk of yardage there. So San Jose really establishing their run game and using their whole plethora of weapons right now. Twenty-seven. Yeah, there's the mistake. We had a little bad tackle in the blue shirts there. We had him. They had him stop back up the field and then we broke a tackle and made about seven yards. So it's now a second and three. It looks like. Lincoln ahead, seven to nothing. San Jose in their standard two back, two wide receiver formation. Rios in motion, here's a handoff and an end around to Arellano and he's got some daylight. He's got the first down. He is at the, he's at the 20 and he's gonna be stopped right there by number 30, Jorge Escobar. But another first down, an end around for Jose Arellano and he is going to be counted on a lot more now that Matthew Blea is, is done for the game. It's another reverse that was set up very well. Once he got the second so hand off, he was outside. He just got upfield, turned his shoulder square, and up he went. Pressure, Another good play. Bulldogs are moving very well right at the moment. And what I'm noticing is that these Bulldogs, they have the speed. They get out in space. Lincoln is in trouble. So another first down. Here's their standard eye formation for the Bulldog offense. We're in the second quarter. A handoff to Rios. Number 40, and he's going to gain about four yards. He is that Jeremy Rios. classic big Bonk bruising Harris. back, especially the one you want down near the goal line. So he's going to be a very key weapon, I would think. You can see what's happening. They've eliminated their mistakes, and they're getting good yardage on first down. So it makes second, second and nine. Down, a different call for the coach. Easier call for the coach. So it's now second down and nine for the Bulldogs. 10-17 left to go here in the second quarter. Lincoln ahead 7-0, but San Jose with a golden opportunity right now in Lincoln's red zone. Durant takes a snap, a little bubble screen to corner. He makes the catch. He is having to reverse field, and he is in a lot of trouble. This does not end well for San Jose. And he's going to pitch it back to Durant, but he is swarmed by a bunch of Lions players. But he hands it up to number 62. Richard Talun again, he's got open field. Touchdown, San Jose Bulldogs. Wow. Calamity at its wow. finest, I don't believe it. A playground play, folks, you just saw it. A playground Touchdown, play. San and it worked, Jose. well, nothing was set up, they just kind of threw the ball around and ended up in right hands and uh, Bulldogs score. That, that's something you see at a school field on Thanksgiving morning. My word, that was 
unbelievable. I've never seen anything like that. Give the Bulldog offense credit. It was a play that was designed one way. It completely fell apart, and they just had to think on their feet. Here's the point after. It is up, and it is no good. And so a little bit good. wide left. We have a flag there. But there is a flag, the and the penalty is against Lincoln, so we may need to re-kick. Wrapping the kicker. That last play, the only thing you missed was the trombone in the end Oh, zone. man. <laughs> Shades of the Stanford Cal big game. My word. Yeah, that's right. That was unbelievable. Yeah. And ironically, the colors are very similar yeah. to the big to the big game. <laughs> yeah. But unbelievable. Th that's going to go in a highlight reel for quite some time. I'd like to see if all those pitches were forward. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were no flags on the field, yeah. so it looks to be a set, but we, another timeout it's for Saturday. San Jose High. I think they're doing it to give Richard Talungan a little time to breathe. My yeah. goodness. That was unbelievable. Incredible. Woo. Well, folks, we have a ball game today. Usually by uh. halftime the last couple of years, it's been 45 to nothing. And half of the fans have gone home, so we may be here often in the day. And you know what? The more competitive, the better. Absolutely. Because not only has Lincoln won these last 11 games, the average score has been 40 to 7. And as you said, not competitive by halftime, half the crowd's already gone. Yeah. So, if, they, if San Jose can keep it competitive like that, hey, we I'm could be down. here all day, folks. I'll tell you what, folks. At this time, we need to sure have all of the royalty on the side, not on the before rugby oh, from without home question. schools to meet on the track in front of your And if I saw correctly, Ismael Salazar, multi-talented offensive all lineman, because he was also kicking the extra sides. points. Please meet on the track. In front of your and wow, and Coach Jason Pierce being director. very, very aggressive. He's going to go for two. Here we go, Duran under center. Standard goal line formation. Hands off, and he's going to be stopped short. Miguel Rivera tried to go to the outside. He's got and stopped he short. Justin Grant jumping up in celebration stopped. as he stops the two-point conversion. But we have ball game, folks. 9.48 left to go. Lincoln's lead now cut to 7-6 to six on what could be considered quarter, maybe a fumble rooski. I'm the mother of Richard Carter. And I'm the sister of I'm Richard Carter. Carter. Okay, Richard Carter. Carter. And we, uh, we go to San Jose High, we're for San Jose, hey. Okay? Um, we're loving every minute of it. We're bringing home that ball. Next year. Strange things happen in a rivalry day game, don't they, Coach? You just never know. Mm. And everyone on Lincoln's sideline, after and they saw that play, they didn't know what to think. They just sat there and going, what What just happened? Yeah, no, well, it's got the, the, all the other side of the stands into the ball game now, so we got a ball game. And, really and, <laughs> and, of course, they were all looking for flags on the field, which there were none, so case case closed. So now we are ready to kick the ball back. Ismael Salazar, offensive lineman doing the kickoff duties. He's going to just do a little squib kick. And Lincoln touched the ball, and San Jose may have recovered. Who's got it? Who's got it? And San Jose recovers the fumble. Diego Salazar keeping his head on a swivel. The Bulldogs retake possession. We've seen that now from the other side the last few years, even when they've been ahead. The onside kick has been a big part of this game. I'm not sure that was an onside kick. I think he just kicked it into an open area. It just looked like a squiver because yeah. you would think a guy like Ismael Salazar, who typically plays offensive line, kind of ought to see him kicking off. But then again, here we go. Bulldog offense back on the field. Bulldog offense in their standard eye formation set. Duran under center. He's going to drop back to throw. He's moving to his right. He's got, he's got a blitz coming, but he completes the pass to Jose Arellano, and he's going to have close to a first down. 
Steven Robertson was coming on his blind side and had a seed sinking missile on him. But Duran got it off in time. Ariana makes the catch in midair and a first down for San Jose. Duran showed me a lot of good plays on that play. I'm so sure down. he felt the pressure from the backside, but he was able to get off a pretty good throw. A man wide open. Ariano been a huge weapon for this Bulldog offense. I believe that's his third catch of the day. And it's only the first half. First down again for the Bulldog offense. They've been moving the ball very well against this Lion defense. Rivera jumps over a Lions defender. And Miguel Rivera, he's been getting a fair share of carries now. And you hear the rumblings of the Lincoln Lion fans who are actually on the side nearest to us in the press box. And seeing that their defense is a little bit tired, so trying to infuse them with some extra energy. Second down and six for the Bulldogs. 6.41 left to go here in the second quarter. Big series for the Bulldogs, they named the score. Absolutely, they're near the Lincoln red zone. A handout to Ariano, he's got some space. He's got the first down, he's shaking off tackles. He's within the 10 yard line. Jose Ariano, we have been calling his name a lot. I think we'll be calling his name a lot again in the second half too. First down, Simple inside Bulldogs. reverse and there was a big hole. I think I could have ran through it. So now the Bulldogs will retake possession. Ariano split out wide to the right. It looks like more of a power formation here for the Bulldogs. Michael Kerner to James Duran's left. Here's a handoff to Miguel Rivera, and he's stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. So good play there by the Lincoln Lions. Number 70, Marco De La Cruz Miguel in on the Rivera. stop. He got some great penetration upfield. Just got a field yeah, pretty good one. stop. Good play on the Lions' part. So now a second and 10 situation here for the Bulldogs. They are in the Lincoln red zone for the second time this quarter. Seven and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Lincoln up only seven to six here in the 66th annual Big Bone game at San Jose City College. Duran directing traffic, pointing his receivers where they need to go. And he's going to go to his left. Here's a play pass, and he's going to roll it up. Michael Kerner, oh, goodness, another near interception. Jorge Escobar read the play well and nearly caused another turnover. The wide receiver was complete. open. Duran just got it there a little late. Broken and there was good recovery on that. By number 30, Jorge Escobar. Come up and knock that ball down. Intended so a close Richard. call there by James Duran very nearly had his second interception of the day and that would have been an absolute killer. So now it is third and 10. Ball on the 10 yard line here in Lincoln territory. Duran under center, he is gonna look to throw. He scrambles to his right, he's got a man open. Ariano caught, touchdown San Jose Bulldogs. First time the Bulldogs have led this seven. game in quite Jose some time. Just couldn't Ariano. get the other side all excited over there. And the Bulldog sideline is absolutely pumped, and they have every reason to be. What a great throw by Jimmy Duran, and credit Jose Ariano. He was sandwiched in between two lines defenders and still held on to the ball. What a weapon. And I know it's only the first half, Coach, but Dare we say it, maybe that streak of 11 straight victories in a big bone game on the line right now. It's been a long time, so we got a lot of football left to play. So we'll see. They're playing hard. They're it playing is well. still early. Lincoln is actually playing well. Yeah, both teams are playing well. San Jose going for two. Durant rolling to his right. He's got somebody. He's got Ariano to catch. Did he get in? No, he did not. The ball did not break the plane. A great effort by Arellano, though. And we have a whole new ball game, folks. 7.02 left in the first half. The Bulldogs ahead 12-7. to And the Lincoln fans, they don't know what to think right now. They are sitting here stunned. Hi, my name is Lai. I'm a junior at San Jose High, class of 2011. 
and it's just been great this year. We worked really hard on our decorations, as you can see, and we're just trying to get the school like really pumped up, and we really think we're going to bring the home this year, bring bone. Bring home the bone. <laughs> Bring home the bone this year, and we have a lot of supporters out here, and hopefully we take it this year. Go Bulldogs! Woo! Outstanding drive by the Bulldogs, and again, it shows this year that there's just a little more closeness in this game. The San Jose High offense has never moved the ball like this in the last three or four years, and they're moving the ball today. They had the one unfortunate pass interception down at this end, and uh, that turned in the back, and they'd be up by two scores. So they're in the game, they're playing hard, and uh, let's see what happens. Indeed we will, and what a turn of events. Lincoln scores on their very first play on the offensive side of the ball. We're starting to think, well, is this a repeat of the last 11 years? But lo and behold, Coach Jason Pierce has been getting his guys to play hard and they are executing now. It's one thing when you're playing hard, but when you combine that with execution, oh boy, watch out. Salazar kicking the ball off, another onside kick. Who's got it? Who's got it? It was an onside kick and Lincoln recovers. So very heads up play there. Not sure that ball went 10 yards. The onside kick was 10 less than 10 yards. Less than it, so it should uh, go over to Lincoln. No, it was a very, very close call, yeah. but with all that's gone wrong for Lincoln just in the last couple of minutes, a turnover like that on an onside kick, that would have been just devastating. But Lincoln has a chance to regain the lead. 6.58 left to go here in the first half. And only one running back in the backfield. Robertson in motion. They're going to give the ball to him. And right. another reverse to number 21, Richard Azure. He's got a little delay. He's got the first down. Down to the 35, 30, 25, 20. Cuts back inside, and he's got a huge gain of yardage. Richard Azure, the little man, can move. Well, Coach Collins just went back to his traditional offense to spread, spread back some single back, and the motion got the bulldog. And a little bit of trickery right there too. A little bit of a little bit of reverse action right there. They hand it off to Robertson. Azuri comes back around and gets the reaction too. So first down, Lincoln. Three back backfield. Now to Josh Ayala, who gets stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. Number 51 for San Jose with the great play. We were out last week uh, watching number five, and he was hardly able to walk. He was limp limping really bad, and he's running really well today. Josh Ayala is a ball carry on that, no gain on the play. Second and 10. So now it's second and 10 for the Lincoln Lions. Three back backfield, hand off to Robertson. He's got a little bit of space. He's going to squeeze in there Robertson. for about six Back yards. There. Pick up a five. So a third down. And actually, that'll be a five-yard game for Robertson. So early on, it's been a lot of doses of Steven Robertson. This is where the Bulldogs have to tighten up. This is a big series. You want to get the ball back without the Lions scoring. Third and five now for the Lions. Chris Pope under center. Hands off to Robertson, and he's not going to go anywhere. The San Jose Bulldogs playing some inspired defense right now. Middle of the defensive line just stacked that play up in a hurry. There was very little room to run it off. So now we will have a fourth down. And Lincoln's going to go for it, and why not? They are in San Jose's red zone again. Pope under center. He's going to give the snap to Robertson. Does he have enough? I don't know. Does he have enough? It doesn't appear so. He does it. The Bulldog defense hangs tough again. And another turnover on downs for Lincoln. Unbelievable. Run was short. Great job on defense by San Jose. Unfortunately, they've got another injured player on the field. So the Bulldogs regain possession deep in their own territory. There's Duran under center. He's going to hand it off. And maybe about two yards. on that play. Number 16, Larry Dave Patress with that two-yard carry. So it Eight will be second down second and nine, actually. Nine. 
So only one yard, barely enough progress. Offensively, they need to move the ball just a little here. To get field position. At least to give them some breathing room, right? Betcha. Second down and nine. Duran with a hand up to Michael Kerner. Richard Kerner, I beg your pardon. And he only maybe gains two yards. Good play by the outside linebacker. He crashed down and caught the runner in the hole. So already an early third down on this possession. So we'll see if this is a passing down. And give credit, James Duran actually been throwing the ball quite well for this Bulldog offense. It's kept the Lincoln defense honest. It's made him spread out and created some extra running lanes. Yeah, his movement in the backfield, too, hurts the Lions a little bit. Once he starts running around, they're not really sure what to do with him. So he's got two different weapons. He can throw the ball. I've seen him throw during the season, and he can throw the football. And he's and got good foot feet, so he can get outside if he needs to. And while we have a little bit of a break, let's go to Ernie Flores, who is on the Lincoln sideline. Ernie? You ready to roll? Back to the game now. James Durant out in the shotgun. This is a little bit of a different wrinkle. Takes the handoff to Rios. He's looking downfield. Over to the left. He's got Richard Kerner with a first down. And he's going to get a little more down to their own 30-yard line. Richard Carter, good right first down. Coach Pierce is calling off a good play. The boys are in the open. Duran's hit. Jesse Durant. They're moving the football. On the coverage. So a very efficient passing attack right now for the San Jose Bulldogs. And they are moving down the field quite well. So it's a first down and 10, three and a half minutes left to go here in the second quarter. San Jose at their own 30 yard line. There's a handoff to Arellano and he gets stuffed in the backfield. Number seven, Jacob Good in on the tackle right behind the line of scrimmage. Seven, first Valker time they've had San real good penetration a long time scrimmage. again. Once you get up field, it just breaks seven, up the whole play. Jacob Good. So now we will have a second down, and it looks like 12. We're coming up on three minutes left here in the second quarter. San Jose ahead 12 to seven in this big bone game here at San Jose City College. James Duran in the shotgun. Rios behind him, Rivera goes in motion. We have some extracurricular activity, if you will, on the offensive line. Flag before the snap. And false start on San Jose, false and the start. penalty is coming back to bite him again. There's the mistake. Jumped up. Lions have not had five a flag on their side of the field yet. Bring up Bulldogs second have and five or six, long. and that just stops you in the drag. Well, they, co they continue to pile up penalties like that. It's going to only make their job a little more difficult. So it's now a second down and 16 for the Bulldogs. An obvious passing situation here. Duran the shotgun, he's looking to his left. He's gotta go to his right. He's gonna tuck this in and try to make something out of nothing. And is bounced out of bounds at around the 20, his own 27 yard line. So he gains some of that yardage back. So it looks like it'll be a third and 11. Again, that's Duran's quick feet. Got him about 11 yards on that play. He just has his feet a little quicker right now in the Lions. Gain of six. And of course, it obviously helps when you have an athlete like James Durant at the quarterback position. When a play can break down and the pocket doesn't hold up, he can just scramble out to either side and make something out of nothing. And he just did that again. Coming up on two minutes left in this first half. Third down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Duran back to pass, and we have another flag. Right side of the line, he's moving. So more motion on the San Jose sideline. Another penalty another flag on, the on the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs. Just, an, just absolutely the unbelievable. That's the second false start just on this drive. That's got to make Coach Jason Pierce maybe 
turn a different shade of red, if you will. I would say so. So we will try this again, third and 15. Duran back in the shotgun, he is looking to throw. Scrambling to his right, he will not get anything, but we have another flag. As of right now, Michael Hidalgo comes in and makes the stop. And a hold on San Jose again. Probably gonna decline this one. Take the yard on the play. Be fourth down. Gets the Bulldogs. It appears that it decline. will be fourth down. They do decline the penalty. Brings up fourth, fourth down and 16. And Credit Michael Hidalgo for stopping Duran behind the line of scrimmage before they can actually do anything. Good one on one tackle. Timeout. That's a tough act for a high, young high school man uh, player to do, to step up and make a one on one hit in the middle of the field. And that was a good one. Absolutely was. So now Coach Jason Pierce is going to talk things over with his, with his squad. We're at about the two minute mark here in the first half at San Jose City College, the 66th annual Big Bone Game. Philip Kern alongside the coach, Gene Dawson. Very competitive first half so far, albeit one marred by mistakes by the San Jose Bulldogs. The Bulldogs have tried to give it away, but they're playing that rubber band defense. Uh, Lincoln's had some big plays, but they haven't gotten the end zone outside of the first play of the game. So now fourth down and 16. Bulldogs will not go for it. Instead, Ismael Salazar, the do-everything offensive lineman, is going to be back to punt. And a pretty decent kick right there. Won't even get past the 50-yard line. And Azure decides to take a bit of a risk and field it on a high bounce. But the Bulldogs met him with authority on that gang tackle. Well, up by for sure. Well, that, that's you want the coaches are yelling, get away, get away, get away, get away. Oh, 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 go ahead and run. Right. You know, but uh, risky play. Correction, 45 very, very risky. And of course, if the, the right hit on Richard Azure, ball pops out, San Jose could just get it back again. Absolutely. So now the Lincoln Lions have one more shot to take the lead before halftime. 155 left to go here in the first half. Pope is back to throw. The blitz is coming, and he's got a catch to Jorge Escobar. He's got some daylight. He's at the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Lincoln Lions. Well, the quick strike Lions offense does it again. After all that time, the San Jose killed off to make this a more competitive game. One strike, boom, Lincoln back ahead again. That's a big play we were talking about. I think that's probably the first pass they've thrown all day. And it goes the distance. Give credit to Chris Pope. He found Jorge Escobar on the underneath drag route. And all he had to do was just catch it, break a tackle, and off he goes. So now it's a, so now it's a 13 12 game here in Lincoln's favor, and they're gonna go for two. They're in their standard three running back set. And Pope out to throw. He's got Leo, Leo Torres wide open, and the two-point conversion is good. Torres was just out in an island all by himself. And now it's 15 to 12 Lions. Well-designed play. Had everybody go to the right. Wide receivers just slid to the left and stepped into the end zone, made the catch. Very well-designed play. And like that, we have a whole new ball game. And it's going back and forth. This is the way you want one of these, some of these rivalry games to go. Lincoln scores first. San Jose strikes back with 12 unanswered points. And just like that, Lincoln retakes the lead. So my name is Rufi Lagunas. I'm San Jose High's ASB president. And I'm the first junior to become that. I'm the class of 2011. And this year, the bone is coming home. We have... We have a really good chance. They have won no games in their division, so this time we're really confident and it will come home. And this is our Bulldog. And give it up, you guys. Bulldog! Yeah. 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 Thank you, guys. Great competitive game today, and that's, that's outstanding. 
Bulldogs have come a long way, and uh, it's outstanding on their part. And this is especially considering we touched on this in the pregame and did so a few minutes ago. The disparity in the level of competition they play with. Lincoln, of course, plays against some of the top San Jose teams in the city. And for the Bulldogs to be hanging with them, I mean, this, this is quite a testament to how far they've come, as you said. It's going to be interesting to see in the second half how the two injuries and the attrition uh, works out for the Bulldogs. Hopefully they can hang in there. And of course, the, the bright side to all of this, even with 143 left to go, as Escobar does the kick, and this is going to go way back into the end zone. Nice kick there by Escobar. Still have 143 left to go, so San Jose still has a shot to at least get into field goal range, or if nothing else, they could retake the lead again. The last series, unfortunately, with a bunch of mistakes, we got to make mistakes. Just hang on to the ball through the quarter and walk off at halftime in a competitive situation. And the Lincoln Lion fans chanting, Bone stays home, and it has stayed over there for the last 11 years. But of course, San Jose, they want to break that dry spell. And have a chance to retake the lead here. The Bulldogs come out in their standard eye formation set. Duran under center. He's going to look to throw. They want to get some yardage quick. Over the middle, and it's caught by number 25, Michael Mendez. And he is a little slow to get up. Another injury for the Bulldogs. This is not good. That's an outstanding throw. That's a 25-yard pass, and he laid it right there on the hands, made a great catch. The receiver was just hit really hard between two guys, and hopefully just had the wing knocked out of him. Give credit to Mendez. He is back up under his own power, and they are spreading this link of defense wide. Four wide receivers out. Duran looking to his left, scanning the field. He's looking to his right. He's got, oh, it's another interception. Justin Grant picks off Jimmy Duran, and he is going to be tackled down at his own, at the San Jose 45-yard line, and it looks like he's down, and flags come flying. Looked like a late hit on the white shirt there. He came in a little late. The referees do have to keep it under control. Now we return to action with Lincoln having a chance to put this game out of reach. Pope down the field. He's got somebody open. Oh, incomplete. That was a great throw. Laid it out there. Kid ran under it. Just didn't hang on. El Eliseo <laughs> Lopez playing great defense, just timing the ball and then swatting it away. That pass intended for number two, Mark Belay, a junior who's going to experience this game at least one more year. Second and 10. So now second and 10 here for the Lincoln Lions. 106 left to go in the second quarter. Lions ahead 15 to 12. As they are in San Jose territory. There's Pope back to throw. The pressure is getting to him, and he's not going to escape it. Number 55, Alex Avila. Puts him down, but give credit to Richard Talungan, who was the beneficiary of that crazy Fumble first touch. Exactly, yeah. that crazy fumble Ruski. He now has a sack to his credit. He's doing everything. Yeah. Got him feel real well. Nice job. Quarterback caught in the backfield. Third and long. So now Lincoln going to a single back formation. Less than a minute left to go. San Jose's getting more pressure on him. Pope gets the ball off and it complete to Jorge Escobar. And a timeout on the field, 24 seconds Pass left in the first half. It's a good Number play 30. by the defense. They kept him in front of him. He made a good throw, but timeout, Lincoln. he had another 30 yards to go before he could get in the end zone. So that's a good job. Defense kept the receivers in front of him. And that was a huge thing because now Lincoln's looking at Maybe just one play, a deep pass to the end zone, and that's all they have. So now we're back to action. Pope under center with two running backs in the backfield. He's going to go back to throw. He's got a bubble screen out to Cole Del Delvalil. A flea flicker down the field, and we're going to have another pass interference. 
That couldn't have been more obvious and a little bit of trickery. Cole DeValle on the running back option pass, looking for Mark Belay in the end zone. Pass was incomplete. And there were, uh, there were three defenders around him. You figured you could have at least taken the ball and run with it, but San Jose bailed him out of that mistake with a pass interference. Flag on the play. That's why you throw pass it like that. You throw it up, you never know what's gonna happen, and exactly what happens, you get the pass interference, and they get another pass. Of course, you could have the di different side of things. San Jose could have picked it up. Now we're at 15.3 seconds left here in the first half. Lincoln has a shot for maybe a pa another pass downfield. We were just talking about that in that last play. Here's Cole with the throw. And, oh, not quite. Chris Pope with the throw, I beg your pardon. Looking for Michael Hidalgo, did not quite get there. Had the defender beat, but the throw just went off his hands. Another pretty good throw. Second and, and with an offense as reliant on the ground game as Lincoln's is, get, give Chris Pope credit. He is making some very, very good throws. Of course, let's also give credit to the San Jose defensive line. They've been getting pressure on them. They're finding out that when they spread out their options, the offensive line is very weak. Pope back to throw. He's looking to his left. Here's the pump fake going towards the end zone. Not quite. And great defense by San Jose High as Josh Ayala was the intended receiver. He's already got a touchdown to his credit on the ground. So. Great defensive play. Defensive back kept him on the outside and just took him off the field basically. It was a good defensive play. An excellent defensive play by San Jose and it's been, been one of those games that's back and forth. Third and 10 on the 19 yard line of San Jose. Here's Pope under center. He's going to throw one more time. Looking to his left. Going towards the end zone. Oh, overthrew Mark Belay a little bit. He was wanting a flag, but really didn't get touched by any of the San Jose defenders. Great defense there again, stopping the touchdown from happening. However, we are out of time. And with that play, that will do it for the first half. Very, very competitive back and forth. So we still got a ball game, folks. Lincoln Lions Lincoln ahead 15, only 15 to 12. And coach, <laughs> this game has been exactly what we wanted it to be. It's up for grabs. Anybody either side has a chance to win, and they both played pretty decent football. The Bulldogs make quite a few mistakes there, but uh, they're hanging in. It's better than it has been for the last four or five years. Absolutely so, and we will step away for halftime, but don't go away. A whole second half of football ready to go, and if it's anything like the first half, we're in for a real treat. Halftime here at Jaguar Stadium at the campus of San Jose City College. Lincoln Lions, 15. San Jose High Bulldogs, 12. Back down to the field where Ernie Flores is standing by with a special guest. Ernie? Coach, you're going in at 15 to 12 to score at halftime. How do you feel about that at this time? Uh, we're feeling pretty good. You know, we're only down three with the amount of turnovers and fumbles that we've had this game and our best player out of the game. We feel pretty happy. We're, we're okay. We're content with where we are. We still got to execute and, uh, you know, make things happen in the second half. Coach, keep you, it you mentioned your best player going out of the game. Can you share with me his name and, and yes. uh, what the diagnosis of it was? Matthew Blay, our junior MVP. What happened is was there was an interception thrown and uh, they came and blocked him. It was a clean play. He's just knocked out, unconscious, in and out of consciousness. He's at VMC. So our prayers are with him, and, our, and, and it's in the back of our minds right now where, where he's at at VMC Hospital. So, uh, you know, we're just trying to keep our heads up and just trying to go forward. My name is David Garcia. They call me Scrappy. I'm a class of 1973. Been coming to this game for years and years. I think I've only missed one since, since I've been out of high school. Um, what I want to say is maybe the bone's going to come home today, and I really wish good health for the young kid that got hurt earlier. And happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays. Hey, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, my name is Dan Garcia, class of 70. Uh, played in the Big Bowl in 1969, and that year it uh, was televised on KNTV. Unfortunately, we, lo we lost, but uh, we were competitive. And now, um, I'd like Lincoln to wish uh, all, all you Bulldog fans out there a happy Thanksgiving and, uh, and your families be well. And come out and root the kids. Uh, we still, we still got a basketball season coming up, baseball, 
uh, keep the tra tradition alive, and uh, once again, happy Thanksgiving. Hi, Rudy Rodriguez, class of 73. Uh, I've been coming to the Big Bone for many, many years. As a matter of fact, my son played for Lincoln. He graduated years back. My kids went to Lincoln. I'm an old Bulldog. And I want to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And this has been a tradition for many years for me and my brothers and all my friends. Uh, again, uh, happy holidays to everybody. Thanks. How you doing? Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Patrick Vigil, class of 1977. Got my son's jacket, class of 2004, because they don't let me wear my jacket no more because it don't close no more. You know, but got my daughter here, class of 2004. My wife's home making turkey, class of 77 as well. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. We're going to win this one. And come on down to the school, take a look at the museum. I started the museum, it's there. It's awesome. Got history, 150 years in the year 2013. Come on down, take a look. It's all there. Hi, I'm Carly. I'm Ichi, class of 2010. And I just received second princess. Happy Thanksgiving and go Bulldogs. Hi, I'm Jim. My name is Jim Rodriguez, class of 1975. I just want to wish everybody a happy holiday and Thanksgiving. Thank you. In one of the major events leading up to the Big Bone Game, there's a special gathering held at the Radisson Hotel this past Wednesday night. Ernie Flores actually got into the event and caught up with some alumni attending to get their thoughts on what the Big Bone Game means to them. Hi, I'm Ernest A. Flores, and I'm here at the San Jose High Alumni Association 20th Annual Big Bone Bash. My specialty in San Jose High School man is the pep band, marching band, orchestra, jazz band. And then I tell you, man, it was the best thing in the whole wide world to be. San Jose High School, back in, especially back in the early 70s, was a place to be. Uh, one of my greatest fond memories of Big Bone was being in the quads, um, having the graveyard of all of Lincoln High Schools. Uh, for that year, we had a bunch of tombstones that we put together, and we made a graveyard of the lions. Uh, every year, this Big Bone, it's like getting the family together, and uh, I hope continued success for San Jose High, and I I, it's, it's like family to me. I was homecoming queen for the Big Bone Game in 1974. It was a great experience. San Jose High is one of the best um, experiences I had, and uh, let's go Bulldogs. <laughs> Hey, Coach, how you doing? You were going in at, are you going in at halftime 15 to 12? How do your players feel coming out of the locker room right now? Well, you know, they, I think they underestimated how good they were. We tried to tell them the whole time how good they were, but they, uh, hopefully we have a better idea of in the second half. We need to play, you know, they played well. They played really up, and they were in a, literally in a dogfight. Bay Area presented by All States. And we are back for the second half of the 66th annual Big Bone Game here on the campus of San Jose City College. My name is Philip Kern alongside Coach Gene Dawson. And what a first half we had. Back and forth action all the way around. And Lincoln with a 15 to 12 lead over the San Jose High Bulldogs. And Coach, this is exactly what a rivalry game is supposed to be. Competitive, back and forth. And we could see it come down to the very last play. Uh, no question, uh, both sides played really evenly in the first half, and uh, if it wasn't for a few penalties and Lincoln's big plays, it could be a two-score lead by the Bulldogs, but uh, that isn't so. So Bulldogs are down two, and uh, we're, they ready, look like they're ready to play. You're talking about penalties. Here's just from the first half totals. Seven penalties for the Bulldogs, only two for the Lions. That right there, I believe, is the difference. No question that is the difference, and that's what Coach talked before the game. We've got to eliminate mistakes. The better team usually is a team that don't does not make the mistakes, and it, unfortunately, the team that's behind has made the most mistakes. M mistakes is right. Three turnovers for the Bulldogs, only one for the Lions, so case in point. You eliminate the mistakes, and that's both a combination of turnovers and penalties, and you can see why, despite all that, the Bulldogs have been playing very, very tough, but let's give credit where credit is due. Lincoln on their two touchdowns is only taking one play. Right, exactly. This has been a quick strike offense and they just go at will. No question and uh, hopefully they've uh, uh, picked up and, and worked out the penalties and uh, we're ready to play good second half. Man, we got a full house, wow, beautiful afternoon. 
60 degree weather, 10,000 people in the stands. What more could you ask for? It, it really, it's a picture perfect day out oh. here at San Jose. It, it just a beautiful California autumn. You can't really ask for anything else. Hardly any cloud in the sky. The mountains are visible. It, it's it's picturesque. You could take a picture right here and put it on a postcard. Yep. This is where you want to play football on a Thursday afternoon. Well, I tell you what, go home and have that turkey and be thankful for what we all have. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You're already getting my appetite going with that turkey mention. Yeah. Thank you very much. You bet. <laughs> So as we get set for the second half of this Big Bone game, we want to run through a few more numbers for you just to tell you what has been going on. Both teams running the ball very, very well. San Jose with 105 Yay! yards on 21 carries, so five yards a pop right there for the Bulldogs. And Lincoln, same deal, 110 yards on 13 carries. So both teams run the ball very, very well. And San Jose really controlling the game on the air, 105 pass yards to 45. But as you said, it's the turnovers, it's been the penalties, that's what's keeping San Jose from taking the lead. Miguel, we hope that the attrition, the two bad injuries the Bulldogs have uh, does not uh, work in the, the outcome of the ball game. Now we are ready good. for the second half Henry. of the big bone game. In the A little bit of gamesmanship going on here by the Bulldog special teams unit. And the fans are anxious to get this going. They're standing there ready for the kickoff on both sides. And all the balloons are out. And fans not just standing, sitting in the bleachers, they're, they're dispersed all over the fences. I mean, they, they are packing in as much as they can. I mean, this is a big, big deal. We have a full house. We might save standing room only. Mm. Standing room only, that, that works for me. And now number 61, Ismael Salazar, the do-everything offensive lineman, who also handles the kicking duties as well. So now the horn for halftime is sounded. We're ready to go. As the Seagulls have started to make the visit, maybe they're looking for some turkey as well. And here we go, a surprise onside kick. Who's gonna get this one? It looks like a, it looks like Lincoln recovered that one. And as they do, right at midfield. Yay! Looks like number 22, Leo Torres, fell on top of that one. And a little bit of a surprise as San Jose just huddled up and tried to catch Lincoln on their heels. So great field position to start for the Lincoln Lion offense. They go with their traditional three back formation. Chris Pope under center, He's gonna hand it off to Josh Ayala. A little bit of space to work with, he gains about seven yards. Good tackle by the Number corner, came up, made a one-on-one -on -one hit, and that's an excellent play. Very good start for the Lions. Second and five. So now second and five now for the Lincoln Lions. And there's Steven Robertson. He's got a little daylight. He's going to get the first down. He's down to about the 39-yard line in San Jose territory. And you have to think there might have been a change of philosophy here for Lincoln. We saw them air it out a little more than usual, but Chris Pope, give him credit. He not only had to deal with time constraints, but also a very aggressive San Jose D-line. So first down, hand out to Josh Ayala, and about five more yards right there. There's your traditional line offense, uh, lead back, heads through, the tackles block down, and running back runs to the open space. Now we will have a second and six for the Lincoln Lions, and a little bit of confusion there as the, as the down marker Somehow said fourth down. I don't know why that is. Now only one back in the backfield for the Lincoln Lions. Pope surveying the defense. He's going to hand it off to Robertson. He's got a crease. He's going to get a first down. Steven Robertson, what a weapon he has been today.
second. They went back to the two backs wide, one single back, and they just brought the outside running back to the tackle hole and off tackle. That's Lions play. Got to get tough. They, they have been controlling the clock. They've been controlling the line of scrimmage. You can't get much better on execution on that. Hand out to Ayala on the end of round, and he's gonna gain a few more yardage, so in chunks. Lincoln moving down the field methodically. Very nicely done. It's not a bad job of the outside linebacker. He got up field, the running back saw the hole, cut up inside of him for a few five, re five yards. Now second and five for the Lions. Another handoff to Robertson. We've been calling his name a lot today. Not quite getting the first Stephen down, Robinson, but maybe three or four more yards. We used to call this a cloud of dust offense, but on these fields, there's no more dust. No. <laughs> no, no. More and more schools now going to the field turf variety. And it's not dirt under there. It's rubber. rubber. Ground rubber. Cuts down the field maintenance cost, too. Another handoff for Robertson. Does not quite get the first down. So a fourth down and perhaps two. That's what the Bulldogs have done all day. They've let them get those big chunks of yardage to get down inside the scoring zone, and they get tough, and they stop them for short yardage. They just stack that one up right in the hole. And give credit to number 55, That's Alex Avila, three. for making that stop. Fourth down and three now. Pope back to throw, he's got pressure and batted away. Alex Avila comes through again. Four and out for the Lincoln Lions. San Jose takes over. Alex Avila gaining on that blitz. Pass deflected by Alex. And was Alabama. right in the face of Chris Pope and just batted that pass away. Great athleticism from the big man. Now here's why we have to have some offense now. We gotta move the ball. Got to show them they're still in the ball game. Now we were mentioning during the pregame that how Lincoln is a very senior laden team. The same goes for San Jose. I mean, both of these teams are very heavy with senior talent. So this game is going to mean a lot on both sides. They want to end their high school careers with this big bone victory. Now San Jose takes over. James Durant in the shotgun. He hands it off to Rivera, and he goes nowhere. A swarm of blue uniforms. And comes up to meet Miguel Rivera. Elias Pena leads the charge for the Lincoln defense. And is now second down. San Jose spread them out that time and just didn't have the blockers inside to handle the rush. They got upfield. And sometimes that's the risk you run with the spread style offense. It gets everybody out. Maybe create some running holes, but if your offensive lineman can't handle their responsibilities, bad things happen. Yep. And they're going with the spread again. Four wide receivers out of this formation. Duran in the shotgun, a little bit different from what we've seen. And there's Rivera with the handoff. He's got a little bit of running room, but he gets pushed back. Yikes. Pretty strong defense. It was a play that took a long time to materialize and they were able to get upfield and make a big tackle. And I beg your pardon, that was actually Jose Arellano. So the offense had me faked out too. But now it is a third and a long 13. So another end around play that didn't exactly go to plan. And again, a big play, a lot of yardage, just don't get too cute. Pick up a few yards and get it out of there. Obvious passing situation here. Duran looking to throw. He's got a man open. Oh, great play there by Mark Belay, who was covering Richard Corner right there on the outside. And now there is a fourth down for the Bulldogs. Receiver just didn't come back far enough to the ball on that turn, and you've got to get back towards the ball, make the separation on the defensive back. The defensive back had plenty of time to read the pass and knock the ball down. And of course, it was quite the obvious passing situation, and Lincoln, all Lincoln had to do was just sit back and wait for the throw to come. That's the consequence of those long third downs. And now we have another flag, perhaps a delay of game on San Jose. This, if that's the case, that would be their eighth penalty today. 
Means the kicker's going to be kicking out of his own end zone. Not a good oh, idea. Fart. It's actually going to be a false start on San Jose, so that pushes him back another five yards. What I'm noticing is that both five teams yards. really been going for it on fourth down a lot. So no one really specializing in kicking or punting. They just kind of open call to see who can kick. Yeah, this is going to give the Lions real good field position. Here's Salazar punting out of his own end zone. Ooh, nearly blocked and not quite a good kick there. Azuri's going to field it on a bounce. A flag down on the field. And Azuri trying to make something out of nothing. He gets bounced out to around the 40-yard line in San Jose territory. Richard Azure with fielding the punt. Credit C.J. Perez, number 18, on San Jose with the tackle. That flag's in the area, blocking in the back. On most punts, you're going to see it. You see those numbers, keep your hands off the player's back. Something you try to instill in your players, make the smart plays, and we have a hold. It's on Lincoln, so this is going to bounce them back a little bit. Block in the back. A block in the back, coach, a good call there. So Lincoln will start at midfield with the first down, of course. Already a little past seven minutes left in the third quarter. Lincoln ahead 15 to 12. Chris Pope now under center, one back in the backfield. Steven Robinson flanked to his left. Hand off is to Azuri. He's going to get a few yards, probably about five. Richard Azuri, we've been calling his name a lot today. He's been doing a little bit of everything. C.J. Perez again with the tackle for San Jose. Stop by Rafael Flores. Same basic, same line offense, just off tackle. He made a good move through the hole. If he looked to the outside, he had a lot of room outside. He just put his head down and ran straight up field. Second and five now for the Lions. Hand out to Steven Robertson. He's going to fight his way forward for the first down. Very nicely done by Steven Robertson. Another name we've been calling a lot today. Tackle by number five. We talked about it early. They've got to make the tackle. They're not making the first tackle right now. They're missing the first tackle, and Lincoln's getting the extra two or three yards. And plus, what you notice is that when they miss that first tackle, they're able to get into the linebackers and the safeties. So another first down for Lincoln. Pope hands off to Robertson again, goes to his right. He's got a first down, cutting through. He loses the football. And there's a scrum right there at around the 20, 15 yard line. Who's going to come up with it? And it's Lincoln. Close call right there. Elias Pena playing on it with his head on a swivel, covering up that loose ball. And you gotta wonder, Steven Robertson just running with the football out, very prone to a fumble. Yeah, just a good run. But he just got a little loose with the ball at the end of the run. And we're seeing the balls flopping all over the field right now. Ball control has been an issue for both sides. Here's Richard Azure to the left. And Alex Avila again with the tackle. Coming up on the five minute mark here in the third quarter. Lincoln with the lead, and they are playing ball control football right now. Just pounding it into that San Jose defense. Another handoff to Robertson, and he is going to get stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. So, once again, Lincoln having problems in the red zone. It's been a common theme. All day. They've had a couple of plays where a drive of one play and done, they get the touchdown. But in between the 20s, they look great. When they get to the red zone, they're having trouble. That play just didn't set up right. There was something wrong. I think somebody ran the wrong play, so it just broke down real quick, and the Bulldogs were able to make a good stop. So now we have a third down and five for the Lincoln Lions. Robertson to the right and doesn't get a whole lot, so we're going to have another fourth down. Robertson Just about four minutes left here in this third quarter. I think this game is going to go down to the final play. Just with the way things are going, because as we said at halftime, give San Jose credit. Despite the mistakes, they're hanging in there. Done a great job of hanging in there. The defense will stretch, 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 and here we are again. Big fourth down. Make a play here and Got the ball back. Fourth down and five now for the Lincoln Lions. Oh, a little movement up there by San Jose, but no flags going. Hand off to Robertson. He's going to get the first down. He's going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Lincoln Lions. 
Again, typical off-tackle off play for the Lions. Uh, the line of scrimmage didn't get in the hole, and they got to the free safety and ran right past him. And that was a huge play because, as we had stated a little bit earlier, Lincoln had had been trouble getting in, getting in from the red zone, and who do they call on? Steven Robertson, one of their big horses in the backfield, and he delivers. Big touchdown there for Lincoln. So now Jorge Escobar will line up for the point after. And this kick is good, so it's now a two possession game for the Bulldogs. May need to pick up the pace a little bit. Now 22 to 12 in favor of the Lions. Hey, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. This is Ray Gonzalez, class 1973. Also the DJ for last night's Big Bone Bash. I'm here watching the Big Bone game. I haven't missed one. I've only missed one in 38 years. And these are my two little boys here, Raymond and Nini. What do you guys say? Go Bulldogs! Right on, thank you. Just wonder if the attrition is starting to catch up to the Bulldogs. They lost two players in the first half. And on that drive, it looked like they were a little tired right down at the goal line, making some tackles, and Lincoln was able to get in the score. No doubt injuries have stretched this Bulldog team thin, and it's not just the amount of injuries, but who's been injured. We, we saw in the first quarter, Matthew Blea, who's getting his number called early and often. He gets hurt. He has to be taken off by ambulance. Jose Arellano, another big weapon. He actually has San Jose's passing touchdown today. Matthew, he had to walk off under his own power. Matthew was one of the young men we uh, interviewed last week, and he was real excited about playing because he was a transfer from Oakland, and all the guys had really accepted him. And he's not a very big guy. He's a little bit of a guy, but I guess he's been tough all year, and that's very unfortunate for that to happen. Yeah, when you see one of your tough guys go down, you just really wonder if he's seriously hurt because one thing you can Last appreciate about the, uh, the tough guys on your team, they play through anything. Or so it seems like. Or six for $20. Last chance. Trip to Hawaii. Shark games. $200 gets to get in. Now the San Jose sideline is really on edge right now because here they had Lincoln within, within striking distance, and now they've got to play catch up. But if they are going to play catch up, they have a good quarterback to rely on. It's James Duran. Already has a touchdown to his credit. Escobar with a little squib kick. Fielded by Rivera, number 30. He's going to go reverse fields. And able to make something number out of nothing. Great job by Miguel Rivera. To field that little squib kick. He wasn't even the first guy to touch the ball. 47 yard line. Now it's real, real important that we don't go three and out here. Uh, the Bulldogs need to uh, move it upfield. Get a little Parker field position the here. That they do. Sorry <laughs> So now the San Jose offense out on the field. Duran under center, two wide outs in the, in the, uh, on the flank. Duran finds Arellano, good to see him back in the game. Here's a catch for about six Pass yards. Number seven. And so we will have a manageable First second and three. By number two. That's a good throw. That's a hard pass to throw. It's about a 20 yard pass. You're throwing it from the middle of the field to the sideline, and that's a tough pass to throw. Pick up of nine. Yeah, it's always those second routes that go to the sidelines that one. really make or break an offense. But give Jim, James Duran credit. He has been nailing a lot of these passes today. And that's actually going to be a nine yard gain, so second and one. Three and a half minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Lincoln ahead 22 to 12. Duran dropping back. He's going to throw. Does a little pump fake, and he's not going to get anything off. The Lincoln blitz converges and sets him back right around to where they started. Number 11, Cole Del Valle leading the way on that blitz. He was just one of the few guys that were there, as was a gang of blue. Pattern starting to set in. A lot of white shirts were standing up that time. And there were four or five blue shirts, and they were just watching them. Got to hit somebody. It's a third down and eight now for San Jose. Two wide outs, two backs in the backfield. Duran dropping back. He's got to step up in the pocket, and he can't go anywhere. Number 70, Marco De La Cruz. 
back-to-back -back sacks on that possession, and now it's a fourth in about 14. So a good start again on that San Jose possession, but unfortunately, Lincoln just dominated the trenches and back-to-back -back sacks, and Jason Pierce can't be happy with that. Yeah, the Lions are dominating, starting to dominate both sides of the line of scrimmage now, both offensively and defensively. Bulldogs really have to get it together. Indeed they do, and they're going to have to count on their defense once again. Salazar gets the punt off, a much better kick that time, but it does tap number 20, Diego Salazar, and we have another flag on the field. Another one. So it looks like Richard Azuri again taking a risk with those punts that kind of take these weird bounces. So we shall see who this penalty is on. It's a block in the back on Lincoln again. You're already just starting to build up on Lincoln a little bit now on the penalty situations. That changes field position. That moves him way back. Block. Knocks him back Lincoln at Lions. least 10 to 15 yards. I mean, give Richard Azuri credit because he's been taking a lot of risk with some of those punts that bounce in a funny sort of way. First down for the Lincoln Lions now. Down at their own 27-yard line here in the third quarter. Here's a handoff to Robertson. And he gets stuffed right there at the line of scrimmage. Much Steven better Robinson. that time. The defensive line got upfield a little Pick bit, a little one. penetration, and they got in the hole and stuffed the play. We are now at about a minute and a half left here in the third quarter. Lincoln ahead 22 to 12. Here in the 66th the annual Big Bone game here at San Jose City College. Chris Pope under center, one back in the backfield. A fake to Josh Ayala, and now they're going to throw the screen pass. He drops it. Perhaps he was Passing thinking one or two steps out. ahead and just Incomplete. dropped the ball, and he was wide open. And that's generally what happens. He looked upfield before the ball got to him, and it's really hard to look back and pick up the direct flight of the ball, so just dropped it. Really, if you think about it, that was a great play-action play. It was nicely set up. They had the San Jose defense biting on the handoff, and all Ayala did was drop it. Can't blame Chris Pope for that one. He put it right on the money. Third down and eight now for the Lincoln Lions. Here's a handoff by Azuri. He spins away from a tackle. First down and a little more. Look at the little guy run. He even plowed over number 20, Diego Salazar, and fought forward for another couple of yards. First down, Lincoln. Got a couple missed tackles, and I think the Bulldogs are getting a little tired. Starting to miss tackles, and that's not a good sign. No, you even see some of the defensive linemen kind of hunched over a little bit. And you can tell because they've been on the field for a very, very long time. But within a minute left here in the third quarter, about to be crunch time here at the Big Bone game. Pope hands off to Ayala. He goes up the middle for about six yards. Second down for Lincoln. Continuing just to milk the clock out. Alex Avila again on the tackle. White shirts are getting up slower and slower. Getting a little dinged up. And Lance Lopez on the Just need to reach down now is when the tough get going. And it's been a tough go to say the least for this Bulldog defense. They've been on the field for the majority of this third quarter. Pope hands off to Azure. He's going to cut up the middle. First down. He shakes a couple of tackles. He's got daylight. 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Lincoln Lions. Richard Azure shook a couple of tackles, got to the daylight, and there was no way to stop him. Once again, the big play had just hit the Bulldogs, and again, it looks like there's a little bit of fatigue setting in on the white shirt side of the field. And speaking of fatigue, there seems to be another injured lion down there near the goal line. But nevertheless, it is now 28 to 12, Lincoln ahead. And it looks like the injured lion down there at the goal line just looks like it's a little bit of a cramp. They're trying to work his leg out, but 
again, Richard Azure, we've been calling his name all day long. He has been part of that three-headed monster attack in that Lincoln backfield. He busts through for a touchdown and great running by, on his part. They have three backs that get their shoulders square to the line of scrimmage and once they get there, they just turn it upfield and go. They look and for the hole and once they see it, they get in it and go. Great vision there on Azuri's part and that's actually Jorge Escobar who is walking gingerly to say the least actually serves as their kicker as well so that leg could be very very important and as we're ready to begin the fourth quarter is that Azuri touchdown run was basically the end of the third Carlos Cabrera of course, San Jose had such a great first half. They seem to be just falling apart at the seams right now. The kick is up and barely gets over. It's good. Number 56, Carlos Cabrera. Normally a lineman. Again, we're seeing lineman kick. Multi-talented lineman. It's always good to have those. And Ernie Flores is now in the stands with some very enthusiastic fans for this morning's game. Now we have 12 minutes left, and if San Jose is going to have any shot at coming back in this game, at this point, you almost have to think they'd have to abandon some of the ground game because passing, you, you need the quick attacks to get back in this thing. Yeah, we haven't seen the explosiveness on the running game that the Lions have. We haven't seen that from the Bulldogs, so probably they're going to have to open it up, and again, that comes to the mistake so but they're gonna have to throw to get back in the game indeed they will and as we begin the fourth quarter Lincoln ahead 29 to 12 definitely not what San Jose had in mind when they begin that second half because again in spite of all the mistakes they had a lot to feel good about they kept it close their offense was moving the ball well but for some reason actually we know the reason because their defense has been on the field so much they've just been wearing down yeah, it's kind of reversal in the last few years of the halves. The first half, the Lions have warmed down and scored a lot quickly. Today, it looks like it's reversing in the second half. So as Lincoln kicks off, fielded again by Rivera, number 30, trying to reverse field it. He's got a little bit of room. Shakes off another tackle, but give credit to number 33, Jarrell Parker, for stopping Miguel Rivera, because if he had not gotten him down, that yeah, could have been a kick return for a touchdown, and momentum would shift back again. It was a good play. Stating his lane on a kickoff, and that's what you're told to do. And and made it a fine open field tackle. So now San Jose will get the first possession of the fourth quarter. First down at their own 35-yard line. One, the $200 Westfield Shopping Center gift certificate. Now Duran leading his troops under center. Rivera and Corner, along with Arellano, flanked to his right. Two back formation behind him. There's a fake pitch. Duran shakes the tackle. He's going to have to tuck it in and run, and he goes nowhere. San Jose's O-line having all kinds of problems right now. They have the great Eddie fake pitch. Rodriguez, Duran Emilio scrambled to his right, but give Nadia Lincoln credit. Not only are they controlling things at the line, They've also got the receivers covered. Looks like that was a coverage sack there. Quarter and uh, again, the line of scrum offensive line is having a lot of trouble blocking right now. They're having a lot of trouble getting anything going ever since the second half began. Second down and 10 for the Bulldogs. 10 and a half minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Duran back to throw. And he's going to and he's gain maybe a couple of yards. So, again, you're seeing the problems 
with that San Jose O-line. They can't seem to hold down their blocks long enough for Duran to even look downfield. He has to tuck it in and run within three seconds. Just having a real hard time of keeping the Lions off of them on the line of scrimmage and they're just getting upfield and forcing Duran to move and it's really hard to pick up a receiver on the run. So now it'll be third and around seven for this Bulldog, Bulldog offense. First down right here would be absolutely huge. Coming up on 10 minutes left in this game. Duran back to throw. He's looking to his right. He's having a little trouble. He scrambles to his left and can't get anywhere. And looks like a loose ball, but the play was already blown dead. Number, number 79, 70, Jared Rojas nine. blows by the offensive line and pops the jersey for the delight of the Lincoln fans here nearest us. Tight is really turned here, and the uh, Bulldogs are really having to play a lot of defense here. I'll tell you what, Lincoln's been winless coming into today. Correction, fourth and 11. But the benefit of this is that this is essentially their championship, and they're playing like it. Exactly right. They're stepping up. They're making them plays. So now Ismail Salazar again. Back to punt, and a nice punt. Azure back to field this one. Uh, he's gonna try and field it, uh, and he does field it anyway. Shakes a couple of tackles, shakes one more. He's got some daylight down the sideline, and he'll be down around the 40 yard line. Zenaido Aguayo makes a tackle. We're at around nine minutes left here in this game. Head man has some quick feet. Missouri does have quick feet. We saw it on his touchdown run earlier today. Probably would put him close to around 100 yards on the day. He's having a very nice day. All the backs are, actually. Yes, Azure, Stephen, Stephen Hent, Robertson. Both just gashing the San Jose defense. Hand off to number 22, Leo Torres, it looks like. So first time they've used the fullback today. That's the fullback option right up the middle. Now in 16, Dave Petres from San Jose making the tackle. Second down and seven for the Lions. Now at around eight and a half minutes to go. Dogs are kind of just walking around out there. There's no spirit at all left. They got to step up and hit somebody, make a turnover. Now we get a whistle, a flag from the back judge in the San Jose backfield. Flag on the play before the snap. And a penalty against San Jose again. It just seems like fatigue is setting in on the Bulldog defense. Another five yards. Given away to the Lincoln Lions offense. Too many Bulldogs in that pack. May have been one of those illegal substitutions. Hey, Never know. Couldn't say it. Pope scrambling to his right. The San Jose is in hot pursuit and they force him out of bounds. So Chris Pope trying to run one of those play action rollout plays. Zenaido Aguayo again chases him down and forces him out of bounds. That offensive play just broke down. I think he was just running for his uh, health there. Picked up a couple. Third and one. So it'll be third and one for the Lincoln Lions. Now down to six minutes to go. Around six and a half. Lincoln just wanting to bleed the clock out. And a handoff, first down and more. Rich Michael Hidalgo, he's got daylight. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Lincoln Lions again. The Lions are just running away with this, literally and figuratively. Just a uh, typical off-tackle run, and nobody's hitting anybody now, so they're just running up and down the field at will. And I think disappointments comes to mind when you think of the San Jose Bulldogs and unfortunately you see some of the fans heading for the exits and you have to share in their disappointment. Here they were entering the first half on the cusp of a competitive game and it has just slipped away in the blink of an eye. 
Yeah, and the, and the Lions have done nothing special. They've just taken the ball and uh, ran the ball right down their throat, and that's unfortunate. And just to give you an idea, for Lincoln, just in this half alone, 212 rush yards. And the extra point is good. It is now 36 to 12. Lincoln tripling up the San Jose High Academy Bulldogs. Actually, we are around seven minutes left here in this game. Well, the white shirts are limping to the sideline, and it's just kind of a down time. You got to get them back up. I know it's hard, but they got to finish the game. Although I think some of these injuries that have happened for San Jose, they've caught up to them. Yeah, exactly. And, and especially when you have a roster as thin as San Jose's, you lose a key component, it, that could throw your whole game plan out of whack. And I think that's exactly what Coach Pierce has been dealing with today. I think that's part of it. There's no question about that. And a lot of times emotions are crazy and it can carry you through a couple halves. I know I've had it happen. You get so high that just the emotion level, once you get to that peak and uh, you get there and the, the, you've wasted all your positive energy and it's hard to get it back. Especially with the way the defense for San Jose has just been run on today. As we said, 212 rushing yards for Lincoln just in the second half alone. Yeah, and it's nothing special. They're just running off tackle. That's a flying offense. Just hand the ball, let them run. Now Jorge Escobar is ready to kick this one off. And just lays into this one. Very nice kick. And San Jose, Richard Corner fumbles the kick off a little bit. Richard He's got some daylight. He's got a shot. There he goes. Only the kick of the beat. He is gone. 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, San Jose Bulldogs. So a glimmer of hope there as Richard Corner, who actually fumbled that kick, gets his act together and takes it to the house. But now we have another injured Bulldog, number 83, Rafael Flores, getting up very, very slowly. Looks like he's cramped up. He's not even using his left leg. That's just a special play there. Once he got through the first uh, line of rush, he was gone. He was out in front, and he outran the rest of the team. It's a good run. And not to mention shaking off a couple of tackles at the same time. Once he had that kicker to beat, and it looked like Escobar just kind of got caught in the middle. Wasn't sure what happened with his tacklers. And once he got going, Kerner was already by him. So a great play there. And <laughs> Lincoln a little stunned that their special teams has let him down a little bit. So we're at about seven and a half minutes to go. 36-18. For San Jose, so we'll see if they go for two to make this a little more interesting. And now we have a timeout by San Jose. We want to recognize more of our sponsors who have made this telecast possible. The April Lynn Walsh Family Law, Bob Daly, class of 1964, Delbert and Nancy Azevedo, Billy Ann, the that Blue Tones. Good. The Decade of Decadence, the 80s. Kathy Dead Lorenz Ratzloff, Gary Dominguez and Becky Renteria Dominguez. Henry Rangel, class of 74. <clears throat> Danny and Kitty Garcia. And a sponsorship in memory of Eddie Ephthamos, class of 1966. So here's Duran in the shotgun, looking downfield. Scrambling up the middle, and he's going to get down to the 10-yard line. And again, we're real appreciative of the people that donated this year because we plan on doing this uh, down the road, and that's the only way we can do it if we have super support from our alumni and friends. So if you're wondering what San Jose was doing back at its own 15-yard line. It was actually an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on San Jose, so that pushed him way back from the typical two-point conversion line to scrimmage. Nevertheless, though, 
a great kick return by Richard Corner and doesn't take much time off the clock, so there's a little bit of hope left. Still got time. A couple big plays like that, you're right back in the game. You're still down three, three scores. And we continue to read for some more of our sponsors here. Martin and Luis Reitano Smith, Francis Gallegos, class of 1964. Doug Rivas, also class of 1964. Carlos Gallegos, class of 1961. Jerry and Irene Morgan, class of 1964. Rudy Aguirre, attorney at law, class of 1971. Diane Bernal, class of 1972. Ernie Delgado, class of 1975. Cliff Obi. Heavenly Brew at National Hispanic University. As we continue with the game, Ismael Salazar with the kickoff. Looks like it's going to be an onsider, and it is. Lincoln recovers. Oh, wow. What a hit as Jorge Escobar recovered the kick. And a collision to end Jorge all collisions Escobar. right there. It's been a battle of the onside kicks. I'm not sure anybody. Maybe the Bulldogs recovered one of the onside kicks. I don't think they've kicked it downfield yet today, have they? The, the only ones that have kicked it downfield is Lincoln. Yeah. But, of course, San Jose has to get back in this game. Unfortunately, that gives the Lions pretty good field position again, the way they've been running the football. Here's Pope with the handoff to Stephen Henderson. Robertson, excuse me. Steven and Robertson. another good right? chunk of yards, maybe another first down. Robertson's just been chewing up the yards in the second half. And uh, again, it just hand off tackle side, run right behind the tackle eight, and eight, pick up seven up. yards. Now at about two. seven minutes left here in the fourth quarter, Lincoln ahead 36 to 18. And be sure to stay with us after the game because they will have the trophy presentation to the victor of today's game. Pope the handoff to Ayala. Bounces to the outside, he's got daylight. First down and more. Down to about the 25 yard line. So Josh Ayala, who we talked about in the pregame, wasn't sure if he was even going to play, but he's got a touchdown to his credit already. He's had a good day, and he's had it, with, you know, it was kind of exciting for him to get in the game. Like I said, uh, Monday he could hardly walk, and uh, now he's uh, running down the field. Good for him. Very good sight to see because you hate to have somebody miss a game like this because of injury. Absolutely. That's six and a half minutes left to go here in the game. 36-18, Lincoln advantage. Pope scanning the defense, running down the play clock as much as he can. They, they can just take their time. Here's Hidalgo to the left side. He's going to have a first, close to a first down, maybe about eight or nine yards. Michael Hidalgo. Just shy of that first down. Number 18. So now a second and two for the Lincoln Lions. And they, they're just chewing up the clock. They can just take their time because they hold the advantage on the scoreboard. So now as the Lions line up again, Lincoln fan base just waiting to see that trophy get awarded to him. There's Pope to Robertson. He is going to get a first down. Robertson. Nothing else. Robertson has been very, very consistent today. White shirts are getting up a little slower every time. I believe the defensive fatigue is setting in. I think it is set in. A few more sponsors we'd like to thank. David Salazar, class of 1969. Rudy and Teresa Rodriguez, Mona V, and Gloria Villegas, class of 1972. Pope now under center with a traditional three back set. We're now at the five minute mark here in today's game. Handoff up the middle to number 24, William Pacheco. Typically lines up as a wide receiver, Manuel but they're giving him some action Rocha. in the backfield. Actually, correction, that's Manuel Rocha. Last few years, the uh, Lions have started lining up with all the tackles in the backfield, the monster backfield, Coach calls it, but I haven't seen that today. <laughs> well, even their standard formation, all the Lincoln backs have been monsters, yeah, so I, I it, it, it's, it's not so much dictated by the formation. Right. 
Pope with another handoff and stuffed right behind the line of scrimmage. Donnie DeGray with the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Good job, good penetration, got to get upfield, made the tackle. And some more sponsors we'd like to thank. John and Elisa Carroll, class of 1974. Adele Rubino Frosto, class of 1974. And Richie and Cindy Reyes, class of 1975. We thank you and appreciate you for your sponsorship for helping this telecast to happen. Now the Lincoln Lions have a third down to work with here. Third down and goal, essentially. Pope with the handoff to number 22, Leo Torres. And fourth down now Leo for the Lions. Torres Did not quite here. get to the goal line. Coming up on three and a half minutes left to go in this game. 36 to 18, the Lincoln Lions ahead. And if you were just joining us, the second half has been a far cry from the first one. We entered halftime. Lincoln only ahead 15 to 12, and ever since, it's been all Lincoln Lions. All Lincoln Lions in the second half, there's no question. Just running there off, off track of play, and they've just warmed down. Fourth down and goal to go here for the Lions offense. Traditional three back set, Pope takes the handoff. Torres with the ball, and he is gonna be stopped short, so San Jose will get one more possession. And the Lions. To and while we have a break, we also have some production crew members we'd like to thank for helping make this telecast possible. Our producer, Bill Clyden. Associate producer, Leslie Muniz. Coordinating producer, Jim Reisinger. Scott Dawson here spotting for us in the press box today. On-field reporter, Ernie Flores. And our camera crew, Larry Rep, Richard Reisinger, and Gold for Gold. Thank you to every one of you for making this happen. While somewhere on the four or five yard line. Now just under three minutes left to go here. San Jose with one last possession to make this score respectable, and we have another flag. Timeout, a Lincoln. It's, it's a timeout, I beg your pardon. Timeout for the Lincoln Lions. So while we take a moment, Coach, just want to give your thoughts overall because it's been a tale of two halves, essentially, because I don't think anyone expected expected this onslaught from Lincoln because San Jose was moving the ball well. They had that bend but don't break philosophy. They were stopping them in the red zone, and it just seemed to fall apart at the seams. I think it all just came down to attrition. I think, uh, as we mentioned earlier, that the, the momentum or the excitement kind of went away at halftime, and they came out a little flat, and the offense couldn't get going, and once the Lincoln Lion Offense got going, there was, uh, the game was over. They steamrolled again, and that's unfortunate, but I give all the credit to Coach Pierce. Uh, the Bulldogs have not won a game in two years, and they won four games this year, and that's just an outstanding job by Coach Pierce. And we have another flag down for, the, in the backfield of the Lincoln Lions. Legal substitution looks like, like on the Lincoln. The PTSA San Jose uh, uh, drawing for the 49ers women edition football is Sylvia Guzman. Now it's a first and five and for the San Jose offense, traditional I formation. And they hand it off and gain a few yards out of it. I'm not sure what they're doing running the ball because and they want to get back in this game. They got to start throwing. In football is. Sal Savidre, please collect your prize over at the canopy on the center. Daniel Hart with outside. the credit on that stop. So Lincoln may only have one win to their credit, but I think if you ask them if they will only have one win, this would probably be the one they'd want. And their season is successful, absolutely. Here's Duran back to throw. He's looking downfield, looking to his right. He's got corner open and a, oh, a near interception. Jorge Escobar had dreams of a pick six dancing in his head, but he couldn't hang on to the ball. Ball was in the air a long time, and those are dangerous. And the 
free safety saw it and read it and came flying up. Would have been six, but he dropped the ball. Another close call for James Duran. He's had a few of those today. He's had a couple of picked off as it is. But at this point, they're desperate. They got to get back into this game. Third and one now for the Bulldog offense. Corner to Duran's left. Handoff up the middle. It's going to be a first down. Number 40, Jeremy Rios who is actually a junior, so he'll be around for one more season. It's a good straight ahead hand up run. Just a power right up the middle. Jeremy Rios rushes for the first down for the Bulldogs. And number 50, Julio Del Carmen gets the credit for the stop. First down and 10. We are within two minutes of this game being over and the presentation of the Big Bone Trophy, so you'll want to stick around for that. Corner in motion, he already has a touchdown and kick return. Durant to his right, fakes the Lincoln defender out, and he has, looks like Arellano down at the sideline. He gets forced out of bounds. That was a good throw, and, uh, and Mr. Durant is showing some athletic ability today. He's moved around, he's throwing, he's been rushed pretty heavily, but he's made some good throws. And Unfortunately, he's had a few picked off, but I think yeah, overall he's done a pretty good job. That he has. I mean, and he's been constantly pestered with a Lincoln pass rush. That's been absolutely aggressive today, and that's been a big key. There's Durant under center, two backs behind him. He's going to continue to throw. He's got Croner deep, and will he get it? No, just slightly overthrows him. He was and even double covered by Jorge Escobar and Jarrell Parker. But Durant had just Durant enough Parker. where he had that ball in the exactly. air close to 50 yards, and mm -hmm. that's a good throw. That is a very, very good throw, showing his arm strength. His tips, absolutely. Mm -hmm. One thirteen left to go here in today's game. We thank you for staying with us for the 66th annual Big Bone Game here at San Jose City College. Philip Kern alongside the coach, Gene Dawson. Been a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. It's been a pleasure working with you. And uh, we, we want to wish everybody here today a very happy Thanksgiving and a safe ride home. Duran with the bubble screen complete to number 85, James Powers. Doesn't really go anywhere. Actually loses yardage from the sounds of it. As Manuel Rocha again playing both sides of the ball. And you notice with some of these thinner rosters, you get a lot of two-way players. Playing both offense and defense, that takes a lot of endurance. Yeah, there should be a lot of the um, second string, third string, fourth string should be in there by now. They should be filling up spots everywhere. Everybody needs to get in this game. Within 40 seconds left of this big bone game, fourth down and six to go. Pass out to Kroner. It's incomplete, and that will pretty much do it. The Lincoln Lions have basically sealed Lincoln this one up, all that, needs to, all that needs to happen is just to run out the clock. And again, just want to thank all our sponsors and our production crew for making this telecast happen, the first of its kind for Create TV and hopefully the first of many. Hopefully, again, with our sponsors and everybody, we can return and do it again next year. Absolutely. And this has been a blast. I, I really enjoyed it. I really have. And what a day. 29. 29. And the Lincoln crowd chanting, Bone stays home, and it looks like it will for the 12th consecutive year. Well, you have to give credit where credit is due, and you mentioned it, Jason Pierce, a San Jose team that had not won a game in two years. And now, and they've won, they won four games this year, but Lincoln Lions, a team that was 0-9 coming into today. They had disappointments abound, but they win the one that matters most. The 66th annual Big Bone Game goes to the Lincoln Lions by a final score of 36 to 18. What, what, what a game this was. Unbelievable. No, it was, uh, the first half was uh, real, real strong, even football. The second half just got out of hand a little bit. Just got out of the attrition, I think, caught up with the Bulldogs. They got a little tired, and the Lions to just moved the ball at will. But if nothing a else, I mean, give, and we, we were just touching on this a minute ago, give Coach Jason Pierce credit. I think he's got quite a bit to build from because 
you, you consider the last few games non-competitive at all. People were here to the very end. I mean, we saw it at halftime, 15 to 12. San Jose was sticking with them. I think they made a lot of progress as far as this year goes. And this is a sign of things to come. We can expect a lot more competitive games in the, in the future. I think you're right. I, I, the first half was really, uh, really outstanding. And uh, again, I think it was just they got a little tired near the end and uh, they ran it up a little bit. But again, both sides played hard and that's what this game's all about. It's a tradition that hopefully never ends. Well, with, with all the history behind this one, I mean, both teams invest a lot because, as we said before, they're not eligible to go to the playoffs. The Central Coast section tournament has already started to happen. That's the San Jose City College has hosted some of the games already. And just because of the timing of this game, this is their championship. This is what they play for every single year. And as you see the Lincoln Lions celebrating on the field, and they will be presented with the Big Bone Trophy momentarily. Now Ernie Flores is down on the San Jose sideline. This is a hard fought game here at the 67th annual Big Bone game. I'm gonna be speaking to the senior captains and the seniors from San Jose High. How do you feel playing amongst your friends and family here on the 67th annual Big Bone game? Uh, playing this game is like a big honor for me. I've been looking forward to this game all year, but we came up short and um, that's all I gotta say. Yeah, how about hard. you, Captain? How about you, Captain? Hey, we had a hell of a season. We had all the fans support us here. We came up a little short, but hopefully we'll get them next time. And you, Captain? Well, we fought hard. We never gave up like previous years. Put it our all, but we came short. We tried hard, so. Players and Bulldogs, I want to congratulate you on an outstanding season. And what would you like to say to your fans out there? Let's keep that Bulldog pride, guys. Keep that Bulldog pride and show up. Just go out to every game next year. We'll have a good season too. Matt, Watch Matt. those juniors. We gotta give this game out to Matt. He came. He went out early in the first quote, in the first half. Snowball. Hopefully he's doing good right now. We dedicate this game to Matt. And hey, what would you like to say? Go! Bulldogs! What what a game this was. And as you see, some of the San Jose players are obviously disappointed. I mean, you could tell that they are just heartbroken because first half you thought there's a chance to pull this out. They had every opportunity. Unfortunately, they keep shooting themselves in the foot. Penalties, turnovers, you name it. And it just happened to slip away. I mean, case in point, you talked about the San Jose defense wearing down. 364 rushing yards for Lincoln. An absolutely astounding total. Yeah, no, they just, and again, it wasn't anything special. They just handed the ball off and they ran off tackle and they just couldn't stop them in the second half. And. Uh, that's what the first halves will look like in the last three or four games. But uh, like I say, they hung in there in the first half, and we had a football game at halftime. Here, we're, we're right here with Richard Corner, San Jose High Bulldog Jr., who ran a 99-yard touchdown back for 99 yards. Richard, what do you take? Take us through that play, how it went. Well, I told my players he just had a good block, and they did, and I made it. That's about it. It was an outstanding run. Even though you came up short, what message would you like to send to your, your team next year when you come back and play? Play even harder. Play even stronger. Become Bulldogs. That's all I got to say. So with that, the Big Bone game comes to an end, the 66th annual edition of this historic rivalry between the San Jose High Bulldogs and the Lincoln Lions. For the coach, Gene Dawson, and everyone at Create TV, my name is Philip Kern. It's been a pleasure being with you this afternoon. And as always, have a good night, everybody. The final score, Lincoln Lions 36, San Jose High Academy Bulldogs 18. We'll see you next year, everybody.